I'm tired of this fat fuck popping up in all my fucking search engines when I'm looking for a fucking workout video. I don't give a fuck about the aftermath from any of you boogie fans that feel sorry for this greasy fuck. Oh. Cheese drinking. Ass smelling. Crisco bathing. Lard gargling. Calorie eating. Blah. Big pounds gorging. Wide low. Hungry, hungry. Knows I hate fat asses. You are fucked. Let this clip this one, bitches. Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. You are fucked. And you are dumb. I'm coming for you. Coming for you. I'm coming for you. Coming for you. I'm looking, please talk about punk ass bitches. I'm looking 30, 40, 50, sissified boys from the bottom. Mirror Mark. 30, 40, 50, ass busters, dog. Ain't no clap back videos. Why? What is it that serious? But I need boys. Please, the creator. Bless me, but I need boys. Please allow my boy sperms to go fast and shoot fast enough. Go fast enough. Please, please, the creator, please bless me. Mark my fucking words. That's what I'm talking about. I'm coming for you. Bloodshed and bullets. You are fucked. Please. And you are dumb. Let me tell you something, brother. They all saw dumb. 30, 40, 50, punk ass. I'm the one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Swaycast, episode eight. Um, yet another Sway. And today we might be watching the react, or might not, depending on how I feel. Because I'm not exactly feeling a hundred percent physically today. I got a, I got an achy tummy, you guys. Please feel sympathy for me, please. I have no sympathy. Well, uh, well, thanks. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Uh, big ups, uh, David, for the sub. And we're about to dive in and have fun right here on level one. Good morning, everybody. Phil here. Welcome to the level one podcast for what is Sunday, the 28th of January, 2024. We are in the final few days of the month. New releases are out. We're heading full swing into 2024 and it's gaming goodness. Um, and we got some interesting and important stuff to talk about this morning. 
You know, I'm going to catch you all up on how things went on the streams yesterday with both the continuation. Oh, man, I wonder what we're going to be talking about. Of Probably a bunch of membership also, talk. Going through the narrative-based story mode called, I think, The Dark Arises or The Dark Awakens. <laughs> oh my god, we're going to pretend like we care for. about the Tekken 8 story um, mode. And I'm happy That's that going to be a very fun segment. Session, which was great to actually wrap up that whole story in one stream rather than have it be like lingering streams of like, I, I only need like extra time for like a half hour or something like that. Um, so that was overall good. Um, but what we need to talk about today and come to a determination about Oh, the Super Bowl event? The future of RPGs, and in, what? In particularly the future of JRPGs. Oh, man. Is JRPGs is getting banned because there was no support. And manner, yesterday he had a bunch of miserable streams. I'm going to try and pull that up in the meantime. Years. All right. Um, I see more and more of these ultra lengthy RPGs that are coming out, and people ask me to play them, <clears throat> and it's always a tough decision. Because you got to understand the difference between committing to a game that potentially could be 10, 20, maybe 30 hours long, which could take a few weeks to beat, versus a game that you know from the get-go when you're getting into it, right, is going to be a 40 to 80 hour experience minimum. And that just means that this is going to be a game. Okay, so a quick ongoing. recap. Shout out it's to Sir Gamer Phase Gaming on Twitter for it's the updates. For Yesterday on the night stream, it was miserable. 26 and 10 from a single person. And it's not very positive at all. He made five dollars in super chats. Very it's good. And Tekken 8, not even and better. It used to be. There was you know, a 39 with a 25 from one minute man. So man, we got to talk about a lot of futures on this podcast, not just JRPGs. Maybe. You would see two or three major RPGs in a year, if that, okay? And you guys know better than anybody Perfect else example. that he needs a lot remember, of help you know, at ago, the end of this month. Ask, Otherwise, uh, he's select. down by a so trillion dollars. Decision for me. I was like, man, should this be a game that I play or not? Because I've never played a Dragon Quest game on my YouTube channels. There hasn't actually been a mainstream one that's released. And, you know, we talked about it. And ultimately, he said, let's take a chance on it. And listen, it didn't do that well as a daytime stream game. We did play it as several daytime streams, but mostly it worked as a late night session game. And it ended up taking forever. Like I remember the game being over 80 hours because essentially it's two stories in one. They did such a great job with the content of that game to have almost two completely different plot lines in it. Um, but when I finished it, I told you guys that was one of the most meaningful relaxing, interactive playthroughs I had ever done. Like, I was so happy that I had taken the time to go through that game at a slow pace and enjoy it for what it was with a live audience. That it was so different than back in the day when I used to play RPGs for myself, to have that live audience was meaningful. What right? game is he actually talking about in this case? But the thing is... Final Fantasy I'm a live something? streamer. I'm a variety live streamer. I'm not just the RPG guy, right? I mean, she sh I'm definitely not. I think that when I play these kind of games, I hate to say it, but... Oh, Dragon Quest. Honest. Okay, thank you, guys. Sadly, I don't think tons of people come out to watch me play RPGs. Now, there's exceptions. I would say that Western RPGs, okay? The ones that are not as Japanese-centric. The ones that are more... Uh, and a lot of times, action-based, okay? As opposed to, like, slow turn-based or heavy narrative. The ones that have more action to them. Those tend... To at least get a decent amount of people invested and interested who come out and will check out every stream, engage, and support. Okay? But it seems like when I go for the straight up JRPG style, right? The old school turn based, long drawn out narrative, lots of dialogue and cutscenes. Um, and especially if it's very Japanese centric when it comes to the culture. Right. Oh, so not Those only is Argentina banned, Japan is now yeah, about to be banned me, as well. Just don't do as well. Man. Now, I'm not saying they tank. The United States of Phil are not I'm doing very well on their foreign relations. Between me playing a JRPG versus a Western action-based RPG on my streams. Um, just some examples here. <laughs> Compare over the last several years... When I've played games... Oh my god, why is this segment so drawn games, out? I understand what you mean, DSP, and I bet your fans Blizzard. understand too. You All don't right. have to go that long with or it. Or recently, Baldur's Gate 3, right? Compare that to me, say, playing any Yakuza game. You know, I just played the Yakuza Like a Dragon... Or I should say, Like a Dragon Gaiden. Um, or a Judgment game, right? 
or hell, even a Persona game. Or, or you know what I'm saying? Or Final Fantasy, a classic Final Fantasy, like when we played Final Fantasy V last year, right? Direct comparison, apples to apples, which you should be, it's not even the same. You'll definitely get a bigger crowd, more engagement and interest and support for the Western games. Now, you might argue various reasons why, right? And that's fine, because I actually have a few theories of my own. But the truth is, the why doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter why more people come to watch me play Western RPGs. What matters is, what does that mean for the future of JRPGs on this channel? Because It means that the I future love... isn't bright. That's what it means. You don't okay. have to explain that to me. Because there were no Western I RPGs. I can see the numbers, Phil, and the numbers spell console. disaster. Like, maybe they were very PC-centric in the 90s. But for me, you know, Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Wild Arms... Okay. Wild Sneaking Arms. In. Like these were classic series that I grew up playing that I love. I haven't and heard him play that one on stream. Turn based stuff. And, I, you know, I grew up playing that. And I love that style. And that's why today when I jump into a new game like Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, right? Or Sea of Stars. And I see a lot of people who come by to give it a shot. I'm like, oh, oh, I can't take it. It's too slow. It's too boring. It's too this or that. And I'm like, but this is what I'm used to. This is what I grew up playing. I love this. You know, Sea of Stars, which implements so many gameplay elements from classic RPGs of my youth. Like okay, bro, but, but here's the thing. You're not playing this for yourself. If you wanted to, you can just turn the stream off and play it for yourself and enjoy your time. You're playing this to entertain an audience, and the audience is very vocal in that they're not entertained. It's pretty obvious. Right now, I'm juggling a few different games. This week, the... Excuse me, the new releases are Tekken 8 and Like a Dragon Infinite Well. My first stream of Tekken 8 on Friday night went really well. High views. The, the videos here on YouTube have already done. And again, we well, talk about views. A thousand views on them. Uh, each for King and Paul, which is good to see oh, that. Oh, do they? That people are, are, are excited for, you know, these new, art, uh, new fighting game. Um... And hell, even yesterday when I played the story. Well, he's got eight, he's got just two videos honestly, that are you know, over a thousand you know, views, and then immediately we dropped the four sixty eight, three fifty six, seven hundred and three people. So and, you know, yeah, the views aren't st superb or anything on YouTube, but you know, fighting games are primarily known for its competitive nature, not for playing a narrative based story mode. But even then, it did pretty good. It compare it to like a dragon, you know, like Dragon Infinite Wealth that first stream. As soon as we started playing the game, a bunch of people left, and, you know, support and engagement died off. We ended up going from over 400 viewers down to almost, like, barely 300 on the premiere stream. Oh, it sounds to me okay. like people were fucking and lazy and better. didn't want to show up to the stream. Last night we had even less. Just call them lazy, dude. Come on. You know you want to. You've done it before. Uh, almost no support at all on the stream. Probably one of my deadest streams in a long, long time for a brand new release, all right? Now, again, we can argue the why, and I think one of the major reasons for that is because we just played a Like a Dragon game in Guiding, and that game was over the course of December and a little bit of January, right? And that was kind of a necessary game to play because it bridges the gap between the last one and this one, and it shows you what happened in the interim with the character Kazuma Kiryu and why he's a part of this game. But I do feel like the timing, sadly, was just not good. They should have had that game come out earlier in the year. And when you say, well, why didn't they do that? Well, probably two reasons. Number one, because they already had another one in Like a Dragon Ishin, which was just a re-release of an older game, modernized, right? Um, and, you know, you could say, well, they probably wanted to polish Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth a little more or whatever, which is fine. But you've got to admit, having a Like a Dragon game come out in December... And then having literally the next game with the narrative continuing come out in late January, that's a lot of, of the same overload. And even though the play style isn't the same, you know, Gaiden was more action based, right? And Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth is now turn based. It's still the same universe, it's still the same art style. Okay. <clears throat> it's the continuing plot, right? The plot's going to roll right into it. So I get it for those who are like, man, it feels like you just played this and you're playing it again. I agree with you. Well, right? no. I'm also going to say this. Not really. After now playing five to five and a half hours of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, I feel like they botched the intro. All right? And that's something hard for me to say because I love these games. I do feel like they completely dropped the ball with the intro of this game. 
Why? It's literally five hours of cutscenes and one small dungeon that lasts 20 minutes and a few random fights. No, nah, I can't skip, bro. So we're we're live. Five and a half hours I've played, <laughs> if I could skip, I, I would. I actually used my controller for 30 minutes. And, and this dude is now acting like he doesn't know how Yakuza movie. games play now, and how many the cutscenes they got. <laughs> Again, especially if you are someone who has invested into this universe and this plot line, you want this kind of story, all right? But the problem is, it's a new release. And when you have a new release like this, what you really need to do, okay, is you need to jump right into the reason why this sequel is necessary and fun. What? And then if you want to do this kind of major story and drama and soap opera style stuff, as they always do in this series, then you get into it. So I, I've suggested this, and I really feel like this is what they should have done, all right? So let's, you know, bear with me. Let's see if, if you agree with me. Let's see if you agree. And if you don't, imagine then I guess you're getting banned because that you means you're not a real Phil fan. Like Dragon Infinite well. You're not a real filler. The first scene of the game is Ichiban on the beach with no clothes. Whoa. Just like we saw in the, in the, and of the course. advertisement trailer for it last year. Does he have to be? And he you want him to be covered in baby oil? oil? He's running through Hawaii and he's trying to, you know, figure and out. And also say on. brother an and excessive amount of times. He's fighting them in the streets. That's the intro to the combat of the game. Then he runs uh, into a rag. The problem is not the length of these RPG games. It's the fact he only plays for less than three hours per playthrough. Cut the podcast out. Well, I, 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 would, I would also say it has to do with the length because the length is related to the pacing. And of course, if he played him more, then he would make more progress, uh, even if the g game was slow paced. But that's the thing with slower paced games. He just can't make them entertaining because he got nothing to talk about. Because those games are really good when you're just chilling and, and talking to your chat and hanging out. And just playing the game and hanging out. That group and maybe it's some old people from. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't know how to do that because he's so got nothing to talk about. Four hours of this game. Just look at all his Q and A's. Welcome to Hawaii. Here is the new game. Big up, uh, Queen Here's of Games. New location super. and all the new elements and everything you're gonna see. New food, new mini games, new currency, new side missions, all of that. Imagine being immersed in that right from the get go, and five hours into the game, after you're immersed in this new world, finally the game says, "Well, wait a minute." How did we get here? Like, this is crazy. It's zany. It's fun. It's different. It's cool. It's a great sequel. That's a bad Why idea. Why are we here? What, what happened? And then the game says, all right, let's go back in time. And let's see what happened after the events of Yakuza Like a Dragon and explain how Ichiban was working for Hello really? World. So, so you get used to the, the island part of the game, and then they take you out of there, and they make you do a bunch of uh, quests about dating and uh, you getting canceled on the internet. Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea. That would ruin the pace. I would rather have a slow intro and then it kicks right into the actual meat and potatoes of the game than have me going back and forth. It's helping the Yakuza to get jobs after their, their families you know, dissolved and all the stuff that we just saw in the five-hour intro of the game, then it shows it, right? Because then, right from the get-go, You've immediately immersed yourself in the good parts of this game that are going to be fun and addictive, right? What ended up happening was by doing five hours of story before you get to the meat of this game, you basically inundate the player. And it's, listen, okay, I get it. I want that story element, but I also want fun because this is a video game. I'm not watching a soap opera. I'm not watching a movie. I'm playing a video game. So give me the video game first, then give me all the insane amounts of story elements. I'm also sure that there's going to be plenty of cutscenes once he gets to the island as well. You see? And they didn't do that. I think that the pacing and the order is very screwed up. If they had used the literary device that's called In Medias Res... <laughs> Look at him! Start <laughs> Look a, at him, how smart he middle. is. He got a business degree, you idiot. He's happens. saying Latin and words now. stop, you say... <laughs> so what happens? Let's go back and see. Did the past, and it shows you all the backstory of how you got there, and you play catch up, and then you will fast forward back to the present. But and then the story no, continues that again. that wouldn't work as a five-hour derailment. That just wouldn't work. It would screw up the pacing even worse. From there, I think that would have absolutely made sense. <clears throat> like that would have been perfect for this game. But instead, I've now done two streams of the game. Barely played it because I, there's nothing to really do that much in the game with the controller. It's just cutscenes, and we're not in, and even in Hawaii yet. 
all right now to make matters even worse as you guys know I told you about the fact that my wife wants to do co-op gameplay. There you go. So this is the actual reason, is that he wants to get to the Animal Crossing part of the game so he can make money off of his wife. That's basically what he's complaining about. Right? She appeared on my stream twice over the month of January for Q&A sessions, and those were fun, but you can only answer so many questions before you start to get a little bored, and that's what happened is that second Q&A session, by the end of it, the questions were getting repetitive. <laughs> We were starting to lose interest in doing it because it was getting kind of boring. We're like, well, the next time Cat comes on stream will be when we unlock this cool mode in Like a Dragon. Infinite. I think uh, I think Cat is coming on stream this Wednesday. Let me tell you why, brother. Because this Wednesday is the 31st of January, also known as the last day of the month. And he needs a very, very strong push for support this month to make up for all the quote-unquote fake memberships. So I think he's going to play an em emergency Cat and we're going to see her again. Well, that's called Don, Don, Don Doko. Don Doko. I'm finally starting. And he's basi she's basically just going to sit there and, and nod her head. She's, she's going to play the role of a bobblehead for that whole stream while he plays the game. Okay, do you want me to do this quest, honey, or this one? Yeah. Remember what it's called. Don Doko Island. <clears throat> and what Don Doko Island is is basically their take on like Animal Crossing or any other game with a virtual community. It, they're calling it the Resort Island. You build businesses and you build buildings and you recruit people to live there or work there. You decorate it yourself, you build a commerce structure in this island and it's a whole other thing to itself, right? And the reviewers- Boyfriend on overtime today. Sick people aren't Detroit till I die. <laughs> Hope the plug is all right and you're sitting on cloud nine right now. Please. Please. Yeah, I don't do that during the stream because it gets me super sleepy and stuff. So I can't. Uh, but I got an achy tummy, dude. My tummy hurts. Are actually so I don't know saying, if I'm going to do the react, uh, but I guess right now I'm feeling pretty good. good. So I, I might as like, well. They love it. And I'm curious what's going to happen on that channel with all those memberships like and stuff. Is somebody going to sneak a troll video and it's going to go this. undetected? 22 hours. Because remember, if you're dedicated enough of an Argentinian person, you can just upgrade your membership for pennies and be able to submit a video. What? You played over... Because the, game, the game's roughly around 100 hours long is what people are saying. You had to play over a fifth of the game to unlock this minigame? Like, what on earth? Again, pacing. Pacing seems to be a huge problem in video games today. How do these game directors not understand how to pace a game properly? Why not have the fun minigame open up within the first few hours of the game? <laughs> I, I kind of agree. A lot of games mess up the pacing because they associate value with the amount of time you get to play the game. So games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey are artificially padded out with content so you can play them more, which gives you the illusion that you're getting better value, even though you're doing the same repetitive activities over and over again. Why do you and your progress is artificially nerfed so you get to play them more. You have to wait over 20 hours of gameplay to get to it. So now, here's the thing. I was planning on having this fun co-op with my wife, and we even were planning. I bought... I didn't even show you guys. What did you buy? Did you buy a controller? Oh, he bought a chair. Literally right here. You gonna bring it? I bought the headphone splitter cable. What? So when, you know, we're gonna do co-op gameplay, I just plug this into the Xbox controller. <laughs> I mean, headphones. okay. I also have my neck phones, and my wife can use her own headphones. Good husband so moment. Audio. And he also bought a chair, I think. Right? And we could do this fun co-op of building our island community together and doing all... I think it's going to be fun. We're going to be making choices together. Probably, you know, going back and forth about, you know, what we want to see on the island and how it's going to affect stuff. Because that's the thing. Like, ultimately, we don't know how will, how will setting up this island affect stuff. Do you earn currency for the game? Do you unlock stuff in the game? Like, how does it work? Obviously, there's got to be a reason to do it. It's not just there to do it. It must have some kind of a payoff in the game. And if we're going to do it together, that's really cool. But the problem now is, I want you to think about this. I played three hours on, on launch day. I played two and a half hours last night. We're playing another three hours on Monday. And likely one more nice night. Nice pick. And a wipe. By the end of the week. So yes. by the end of this week, four... That's every modern Ubisoft game. Pretty much. And it, it, it is a difficult issue to tackle because games nowadays cost at least $70. And... People want to get their, their money's worth, you know? People are not going to spend $70 for a 20-hour game. Or at least your average person, I would think.
first separate streams I've played of the game will be between 10 and 12 hours into it. 10 and 12 hours into it. So now I play another week. What am I then now? 15 to 20 hours into it. I gotta play another week. Three weeks. cat was looking like Lucky Charms <laughs> magically delicious on TBS today. I just invested in a bunch of spoons. So if anyone needs one, let me know Detroit till I die. Me a cat mob who? Yeah, I got a spoon right next to me, dude. Weeks in. It's epic. I might finally unlock Dondoko Island. Three I keep it in case of a emergency cat eating situation. If I get super hungry. You know, I hate to say it. Look but at this spoon. This stuff, man, this. it's just this is stressful. Very nice. Delicious. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna open up to you guys a little bit right now. Wait, what? Right? This is fucking stressful to me. We're getting a therapy segment, guys. I have to figure out what works and what doesn't on my streams. I have to balance gameplay so that there's a variety and it's not too much of the same thing over and over. I have to make sure that I'm appeasing different crowds that are going to come by different times and watch and people who are going to be engaged with the content I put out and support it. I need to make sure all of that is happening. Okay? And by the way, thank you for quite a few people uh, right here have already contributed. And as you know, I do shout-outs at the end of the show. Uh, I want you to know I'm grateful for those who are contributing right now because of all this stuff going on right now. Anything is very appreciated. Thank you for Oh, that. we have a pre bag so, Basically, um, you know, just, just looking at this business and streams and my schedule and everything this is tough because i gotta figure out what goes where right right now i'm in the midst of a Baldur's gate 3 playthrough that every time i play the game people show up and engage and support it so people want Baldur's gate 3 to continue and i told you guys this particular week there's not going to be a lot of Baldur's gate 3 because i need to focus on the releases but that it would come back into the stream schedule major way next week and we would figure that out right so we've already got another rpg vying for stream time that people want to see right and then you bring out uh, bring in this one um it's just rough uh, man you know certain municon unlock in the late game Mini games. you don't unlock the cabaret club until about 20 hours into yakuza zero that's always been yakuza he knows Oh, he definitely knows. He definitely knows that this game is also very long. It's going to have a lot of cutscenes, going to have a lot of mini games. He knows this, but he's trying to make him seem like uh, he really cares about the content. And he's salty that he can't monetize his wife. It's like, what do we do? Because he really needs to do it how now. Do we, how do we juggle? How he really lo wants work? to do it. The, the thing is, you know, immediately people would just say, well, then just put Like a Dragon at night. Just have Like a Dragon be night streams. I'm okay with that. If we did it, let's say we did it three times a week. So it's six hours of gameplay a week. Well, it's going to take us two, three months to beat it, but I'm okay with that. All right, I understand. We just played a Like a Dragon guiding game back in December, January. That took a long time to get through, and I totally get it. You know, I understand. But at the same time, if we do that, think about this this way. If we only do six hours a week of Yakuza Like a Dragon... It could take over a month before I unlocked on Doko Island. You know? Like, this was something exciting this year. I was like, oh, my wife's coming back to streams. This is exciting, man. I can't wait to do stuff with her. And now the stuff we wanted to do, it seems like it's just screwed up. Okay, you know? why don't you just pick a different game that you can have fun with your wife on? You know, you can play uh, It Takes Two. That's a super cool, very fun game. I would recommend it to every couple. It's, it's so fun. What I'm saying, like, not to say that... We Especially if you're getting divorced, because it's about them getting divorced and then slowly repairing their relationship. And it unlocks, it won't be fun to do. So, yeah, if you're getting divorced, get on that game, dude. But if we have to wait a month to do it, number one, how many people are going to care? You know, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that it takes so long to unlock this mode that by the time that we finally do a streams of it, no one's going to care, right? I just think that that's really... Bu it bums me out that this is how they've done it. Five hours of slow cutscenes to start the game. 22 hours of gameplay to unlock the fun minigame. Yeah, I you already said this like four times. It's like everything annoying about this game right now. And the, the fun part is, I know it's good. My wife is in Hawaii right now in the game, and she's loving it. She's like, once you get to Hawaii in the game, it gets better, and there's side stories everywhere, and the combat's better, and, the, you know, it's, it's cool because in Hawaii, everything's based on USD, you know, American dollars, and so you get to see different cuisines and everything. It's so fun. How? What? But you gotta, you know... You gotta, Why does it matter that it's based on US dollars? How does that make any difference? You gotta get there. It's like, what if it takes me three <laughs> what? weeks to get there? <laughs> right? So, I, I gotta... How is that out. even a factor in Modern anything? 
And of course, you get food. You get virtual food that gets him excited to be in Hawaii. I hate to say it, but it does seem to me like modern game devs seem to live in a bubble, right? Back in the day- I when think you like seem to live in a bubble. Here, that was one thing. But when you have all this competition vying for your time, right? You need to have games hit that stride early on. Hook you, get you interested, get you excited for what you're doing in the game. And I hate to say it, these modern RPGs don't do a good job of that, in my opinion. They, they dilly-dally and they, they beat around the bush. I don't have 20 hours to play before I get into the real the real part of your game. I mean, I mean I've been talking about this for years, by the way. This isn't just a new thing. Remember when we were talking about um, Dying Light 2? Dying Light 2, you have to play for over 15 hours to even get to the city, which is where the real game takes place, and to get an ability to hover around. That's literally the main kind of travel in the game it definitely doesn't take 15 hours you can do it in less than 10 he just didn't and he rage quit by the time he got to the city you want to play 15 hours before you actually get to play the real game are you fucking crazy that's why dying light 2 died so fast no one liked it people got so tired of it because the intro sucked you know no, that's and not so that's not really true uh, I think they, they made a bunch of updates the game has a, a lot of issues don't get me wrong but I thought it was pretty fun I mean, like, it's not just today. This is like two, three years. It's been a pattern where people making these giant, giant lengthy games don't pace them well. And because of that, you end up with such a slow intro as a streamer like me. It's hard to retain any kind of interest and get people hooked. Imagine if this game had a great action-packed intro. A lot more people would have seen that on launch day on Friday when they were here and said, oh, this is interesting. I, you know, I want to stick around and I'll, I'll check out the streams. Most people just sat here and watched cutscenes with me for three hours. It's like, wow, I want to go back to sleep, you know? So how am I supposed to make that entertaining? And then if I talk over the cutscenes, oh, well, that you, you interrupted the story. You screwed it up. If I don't, oh, why are we doing this? This is boring. It's just you're watching a movie. Why are we even on a stream? So I can't win either way. But the way that these games are made today, you know what I'm saying? How is Catfather ahead when she has a real job? Well, because she plays the game instead of uh, reading out super chats and splitting parts and uh, running around the map while singing. Probably, I would think. And also she has a part-time job. She probably works 18 to 24 hours a week. So, Maybe even less. This is rough. All right? I don't just play one game at a time. If I did, if I was just playing one game at a time, and if all my gaming hours this week were dedicated to just like a dragon, think about this. And also, also, she doesn't have a daily two-hour podcast that starts off with 30 minutes of music. 30 minutes of music. And that... That's something I was going to say before the stream started, but I was a little late. Uh, it's official now. We have officially 30 minutes of music. It used to be like 15. And then he moved the starting time of the stream, and now he plays it for 30. That would be at least 30 to 35 hours I'd be playing Like a Dragon this week. Then probably wouldn't be a concern. We already would unlock Dondoko Island. You know what he, I'm saying? He wastes obscene like, amounts of time day. bullshitting <laughs> and messing around. Friday, five to six hours yesterday. By today, we probably would have been a big chunk into Hawaii, and then probably tomorrow we would have unlocked Dondoko Island. How many people could sit around and play video games for at least six hours a day? Not many. <laughs> you see my point? <clears throat> so? And again, this I mean, because, uh, you know, your casual, regular gamer doesn't buy all the games. They buy the games they're interested in, and they play them until they get bored or they complete it, you know? You can play one hour a day, two hours a day. This is me, you don't have to the play guy who six. Does this for a living can't play that much, in, you know, of the same game in a day. So now imagine a normal person, right? So anyway, the, you see the point I'm making. We need to figure this out because right now I'm in a situation where I know people are interested in Tekken. I'm interested in Tekken. I can't wait to play more Tekken. We're going to be doing it tonight. I'm going to tell you the schedule in a second. Um, and that's cool. I know people want Baldur's Gate 3. All right, and they want it back. This this week, we're purposefully not playing it till the very end of this streaming week, and then next week, it's going to come back into the mix as a major game again, right? Um, but outside of that, I need to figure out how to do other stuff. And the problem is, if I play more of Like a Dragon, I face having low attendance, low engagement, low support streams for weeks. But then I'll unlock Dondoko Island earlier, and I can do co-op streams with my wife. But if I don't do that, and Like a Dragon just becomes a night stream game, we potentially could have it end up being, excuse me, this very slow, almost dead night stream 
for several weeks to a month before we even unlocked on Delco Island, risking the fact that by the time that we unlock it, if I play it with, with my wife, no one will care because the game's already dead. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the game is already dead because it's on the night stream and he was falling asleep last night. I'm going to find that clip. It was very funny. Like, I'm going to be honest, last night's stream disheartened me tons, tons, because I am waiting anxiously to get to the good parts of this game when you get to Hawaii. And I knew that we had to get through more story. It was like the intro dungeon. So it was like the introduction to how the dungeons are going to be. Uh, look at him. Look at the first look at how much fun he's having. And he's expecting you to show up, have fun, and support as he's nodding off. She was. Look at this dude. Every Yakuza game. Yasnuza, more like. How about his and then I, I wrote, because I was really wondering, what time is his late stream? Is it like 8 p.m.? Is this dude actually falling asleep at 8 p.m. like a senior citizen? game except the combat's refined and different so we're doing it i'm looking i was like attendance is going down almost zero support by the way and again not that every stream is about that because it's not as long as it balances out it doesn't matter and that's the thing i, I if this game is going to be like a late night chill stream game then i can balance it with everything else but i mean i got like three tips all night and like one super chat and that was it it's like that's the whole stream and again it's not about that but it's a factor but it is For sure it's a factor right and i'm like this is the second stream of the game and already it's this dead i think again it's because we just played a like a dragon game it just sucks that they were back to back like that i think it's because you sleep on stream you know it had been a while since we played one and now people are excited to come back to that universe you know that's different we just fucking played like a dragon right <laughs> so i kind of get it i understand did he say um, pony up again so anyway what we really need to figure out Okay. He said it last if night in the out, on the daily rap. He said, "Well, that group of people is not the one that that shows up because in ponies up for this game." You're straight up telling up, your customers, right? "You guys don't pay up." Going on. You got a Suicide Squad game that all reports are the game is atrociously bad. At best, it's going to be a co-op looter shooter that's that's kind of similar to other stuff. Yeah. Just with They're also not giving away uh, review copies, which is a very very bad sign. More story elements from Rocksteady. Right? But Suicide Squad is fucking obnoxious. I hate them. I don't think they're good characters at all. I think it's a shitty idea to make two movies and a, and a fucking video game about it to begin with. I don't think anyone's asking for Suicide Squad. They're just so off base. These fucking people. Oh, oh I love the idea of Suicide Squad. Oh, and Squad. again, we get this rant. Dude, fucking people are tired of this shit. They don't want it again. You know what I'm saying? They really don't. I think the, the like, second we... movie... The second movie, I forgot the name of the guy who directed it. James Gunn. The James Gunn Suicide Squad was a very big success. And it made the whole John Cena Peacemaker TV show also uh, plausible. So they had that spinoff, and I think they're making more. So yes, it was very successful. People enjoyed it. I did enjoy it as well. You know, enough with this shit. So I don't think that game's gonna work. I mean, honest. I think that would be a, a game I'd buy it. We'd play it twice. It'd be so fucking bored because it's just running, shooting, boredom. That it's, it's gonna be a waste of fucking time. Right? Um... And then, uh, the other game's coming out. I'm, I'm not playing Persona 3 Reload because, number one, just the copyright risk with Atlas because they're such assholes and they give you strikes for no good fucking reason. And number two, because I've already played it, right? This Grand Blue Fantasy game I didn't even know anything about and apparently it is another So it kind of sounds like your problem, Phil. It right? kind of sounds like uh, a first world stars, streamer problems. Which is a PS Plus game, right? And it's like, well, that's all great, but... You know, Foam Stars is a is a, gonna be a, a silly game that probably you play a couple times and you don't really care about again. And by the way, it doesn't even permanently unlock. It only unlocks for a month and then you have to pay. This it. guy, by the way, gaming is his passion. And we listed like five games that he hates and he's not looking forward to because they're gonna suck. Or to keep playing it. It's like, we're not gonna do that, right? What a passionate so, man. You know, you think about all this stuff. It's like, what else is coming out in February? Honestly, not a hell of a lot till the end of the month. The end of the month, you got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That's the big game that I know everyone is is going to want to see. I want to play it. It's actually one of my most anticipated games of the year, right? That's a definite yes. I'm playing it. So, and by the way, I should say this. When I played uh, Final Fantasy VII um, Remake, okay, I was shocked at the amount of people who showed up to watch it. Like, I didn't think it would retain as much interest in it did but it did like people were showing up and and into it and i was shocked i thought it's just another jrpg but for some reason i guess because it was so hyped and everything um that people were uh all over it hey big ups right? kevin for the so, the sleepy that's a good thing obviously 
But don't fall asleep, dude. This is supposed to be an exciting react stream. About at that time, and I'm stuck playing five. Other the excitement's gonna come in like five hours right. from now. So, so I, I guess mean, you like, can actually take a nap. Games coming out. There's not that much that really is gonna make any sense. So I have an opportunity to focus on Tekken, like a dragon, Baldur's Gate three, mix in some Pal World for variety, right? And that's really what we're looking at for like the next month. I think that will work. Honestly, I do. I think that would genuinely work. As content for the next several weeks and then maybe every once in a while like I said try this foam stars or whatever it is just for variety because it's on there on PS Plus right uh, keep in mind once a month uh, or once a week we got the rea react show DSP versus the internet which we're doing today it's gonna be every Sunday right um, also <clears throat> you know I would like to do a stream or two over on DSP throwback I had a ton of fun last week doing that throwback stream and commenting on Red Dead Redemption 1, and people immediately said, could you do more? And I was like, well, I could, but the problem is, look at the schedule right now. Like, there's so much going on. New oh, no, he's suffering from success. You know, We're making so much content that we can't make more content, thinking, oh, but people are loving it. Weekend. I hate well, agreeing with him, but everyone wanted a Justice League or Superman game after Arkham Knight. Rocksteady teased the Superman game multiple times. Well, I, I think the whole Suicide Squad thing is uh, based on the fact that it's been in development for so long. When they started developing it, it was a good idea to have a looter shooter because those were hype back then. But now they're not. People are tired of them. And they had to do all the redevelopment and delays and stuff. Weekend's the first weekend of February. But yeah, Depending sure, a, a Superman game, everybody would have liked private videos something like the Justice Patreon, League. People still are, are craving a, a really good that. Iron Man game. And now, once again, it's like, so where's my time going, right? And that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm so busy. It's a good thing I'm busy, don't get me wrong. I would much rather be very, very busy and be in demand with my time than the opposite, right? But at the same time, because people are pulling me in so many different directions, right? Do private Patreon React videos. Do a stream over on DSP Throwback. Play the pecs are looking Play extra saggy in this medieval prisoner's garb. It makes <laughs> me want to throw expired produce at him, dude. Young out. Yeah, we should put him in the pillory. Shirt is dude. hugging his breasts like pinched fingers, medium light skin tone, pinched fingers, medium light skin tone, pinched fingers. Oh, there you go. Light skin tone. There you go. Great minds think this alike. Game. It's time game. for a. It's time for a fit check. And while we're also throwing a very ambiguous salutes, a uh, fit check today. We're wearing the glamorous, uh, beige, medieval prisoner garb, and it's very stylish. Make came out in April 2020. I wonder why so many people were watching. Hum no clue. Must have been because Phil is awesome. Um, I don't know, man. I more don't know. This game in this lot. Play more of this. Perhaps game maybe the pandemic. This is happened? what I'm going through right oh, now. I don't, I don't know, really man. Have the definitive answers. And that was also a very hype right. game, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I don't have the People are very much do looking forward to the wife. next oh, one. I can't do co-op with my wife until we play 22 hours of Like a Dragon. Then Hold on, we got on. another salute. I want to pause this one, and that right. one was very good. That one I is. Don't have is, the answers. It's gonna do be great for Photoshop. Look at this. Straight up. With your wife. Oh, but I can't do co-op with my wife until we play 22 hours of Like a Dragon. Yeah, we Dead heard this, Phil. We heard this. You see? For you, it might even be 30. <laughs> if you keep bitching about it so much. Joe Pulse has stretched like butter spread over too much bread. There you go. I'm being spread thin. I'm being spread thin. Okay. Like your hair. And he is gone. There we go. Not even an explanation where he went. He's just gone. He got spread too thin, so he disappeared. Well, rip, I guess. Oh, no, he's back. Never mind. Oh. And on, on top of all of that, you know, there's other stuff going on, too. And again, stuff that I don't really bring uh -oh. up. But... Yep, there you go. We're teasing future drama, you guys. He can't tell you about it, but it's been stressing him out big style, and you should support him. I got some personal stuff going on in my life that's been going on for a while. And that's kind of stressing me out. Sounds to me like the tax man is knocking again. That's just my, uh, my theory. And then coming up, I got other stuff. For example, you know, it's that time of year again. Yep. You gotta start working on your taxes and there shit. There we go. I need time to do that. And can you imagine? I just want you to think about this. Can you imagine with everything right now that we're doing and what's going on right now? Can you imagine I'll be trying to work on a documentary? What? When would that happen? Why are we even bringing right? that up? I'm literally being pulled in 17 different directions with the time that I, I have. Imagine, oh yeah, I'll, you also got to be working on a documentary. Like, what? You know what I mean? So I'm glad that I made the decision that I did. 
that would have just been really, really not. I don't. I don't feel like it would have went well at all. I feel like what would have happened was I would have just lost my mind, being pulled in so many different directions. Uh, you know what that's I'm saying? Uh, um, that's over, dude. You already lost your mind a while ago. Yesterday was a prime example that. of that. I think it would have stressed me out. But keep up the good work. I'm out, and I just wouldn't have been able to keep stuff together. I probably would have made mistakes. I would have been stressed out and reacted negatively to a lot of stuff, you know. And that's the worst is when I guess this, so this is literally the way he was just leaning like this is just a uh, is just like the Sopranos when uh, Tony goes to Doctor Melfi, the psychiatrist, and he's just sitting there and inventing about his life. I've been able to keep stuff together. I probably would have made mistakes. I would have been stressed. Except Tony actually has to deal with a lot more than Philip. Stout and but at least they're both Italian Americans. So it's it's just like him, dude. It's based on his life. Reacted negatively to a lot of stuff, you know? And that's the worst is when I get so stressed out and then I kind of, it gets pent up and then it kind of erupts on string, you know? Do you really think that yesterday I wanted to get angry? Uh-oh, we're getting a backpedal. We're getting a backpedal. I cast? Of course I didn't. But it, 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 it all... He realized how terrible it made him look. And now we're backpedaling. Pents up inside me. And then so much nonsense on the internet. These fucking idiots saying horrible things. And then on to boot to then say it in my stream chat. It's one thing if you want to do your dumb fuck, you know, brainless negative memes and all yeah. the content that's out there because people expect that. But for people to come in my chat and try to then regurgitate that shit, that ain't going to fly, you know. And that's what it is. And you get stressed out. It's everything going on right now. It's all this stuff going on. Yes, right now, income and support is a huge factor. Right? And the bummer part about that is it's not you guys at all. It's a situation. Yeah, it is, though. They're not giving you enough money. For, you, you remember that? And currency could It's not you guys. And trolls taking advantage of it. Don't ask me why they decided to take advantage of it now. They could have been doing this for like two years. For some reason, now it became the uh, the the apropos thing to do with these the gifts. Apropos. Right? But yeah, like this month, we're down a ton here on the channel despite the fact that I'm working just as much and working harder you know I mean look at the improvements that I've done so far in 2024 better thumbnails better titling wow. videos per your request dude the thumbnails that somebody else does are better and he also writes better titles on his videos that only takes a split second starting a throwback channel with the old playthroughs you've wanted for the Whoa. absolute longest and the work everybody else does time trying to branch out with different kinds of content like streaming over on that throwback channel whoa so he can get it monetized and get the watch time up and also make some extra money on super chats and tips crazy he's working so hard and doing stuff with my wife you know this is a big and he's doing stuff with his wife that took him a total amount of four hours over the course of two weeks. God damn, it must be really hard to be a Burnell nowadays. Big undertaking. This isn't just business as usual, lazy bones pump out the same videos. This is actually me putting concerted effort into improving for the new year, like I told you I would. And I'm doing all of that. And then on top of that, uh, you know, no, actually, uh, he is not the hardest working man in his household. Well, he is the hardest working man. But he is not the hardest worker in his household because his the wife actually got a, a job. Chat or safe space. It is not a private chat and it is not a safe space as well. That is true. But I agree if somebody breaks his rules, they can get banned. But I don't think he's being very fair with banning the people. That's a, a lot of people's problem. On top of that, it's th my income is just not being point. fair with it because of the trolling. And it's like, Jesus, you know, it's like everything at once. So I want you to understand you know, when I, I get upset or I get, you know, the reason I like having this podcast is because we get to talk about this stuff. If I didn't have this podcast, when would we talk about this? When would we figure out how to tackle RPGs? Well, we've come up together on this show with so many improvements to my content, with so many ideas for good stuff, just because we sit here and we have this show with conversation. And that's why it's absolutely hilarious when I sit here and you see people in chat we're like, just start the game. Just start the game. Just start the game. Just yeah, start just the start, game. The game. Just start the game. Just start the game. Like an impetuous little four-year-old pulling at your leg. Mommy, 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 daddy, daddy, I want it, I want it, I want oh, it. Dude, look at the toxicity building up. He's being toxic You're going again. the wrong way. You're doing this again, you Phil. You're, you're doing older. it again. Right? This is the kind of content that I like doing. 
This is the what, kind of therapy sessions and venting and coping about your personal issues on the internet. Yeah, you probably shouldn't like doing this kind of content. That's a red flag. Content. I want to have a conversation with you. I want to have something that's meaningful. Open up and talk and improve and do the. I don't want to just sit here and say video game, video game, video game, video game, video game. That's, you know, that's for the youths. All right. I like video games. I love. They're my lifelong hobby. I want to continue to play them. But life isn't just about me sitting here going video game, video game, video game, video game, video game, yelling at the video game, video game, video game. That's. Uh, then you might as well rename this channel from DSP Gaming to DSP Rambling. Because I thought this is a gaming channel. That's not existence on this planet. You understand? Some people are just like that, you know? They just, oh my god, I just want instant gameplay gratification. Hate to tell you that, but that's not what's going to happen. It's going to go the other way. There's going to be more variety of content that's not just pure video games. There's going to be different kinds of discussion. There's going to be things as I get older that will branch out and be very different than the old dark side Phil. Sorry if you think that it's still 2008. It's not. Okay? It's a We're a far cry from the kind of stuff that 15 years ago was going to be popular on the internet. You understand? Okay, old man. Okay. Okay. So here's what I would like to do. All right. I'd like to talk about the schedule, at least for the rest of the week, because I've already adjusted it, by the way. For those who are dying, because it's hilarious, Dark Gaming is saying they're going to run away and eat pizza because I didn't get to it. Dark Gaming, don't go anywhere. Stick where your butt is right now. Your pizza can wait. All that calories and cholesterol <laughs> and the dripping fat can wait. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I changed the schedule this week. There will be a major Baldur's Gate 3 stream this week. Wow, imagine having okay. there will be. being so fucking impulsive. He just, like, less than 10 minutes ago was talking about his anger issues and how that bothers him a lot, and then five minutes later, we're just shitting on people in chat who just want him to get to the point and stop repeating the same thing about Yakuza being too long. I know you've been waiting. A lot of people are waiting for that. They're like, where's Baldur's Gate? Is it going to happen? Yes. There's going to be a major Baldur's Gate 3 stream this week because... People are, are yelling for it and screaming for it. They want it back, right? It's you know it's gonna be another major one this week. And by the way, I think I think Dark Gaming left, which is hilarious because they complain about it. And I'm I'm saying, well, wait, you're gonna get what you want, but they went to eat pizza. Well, well, he's still in chat. Shove that giant slice down your gullet. Um, um, wow, um. <laughs> is that what you tell cat? <laughs> Come back to stream. And receive your good news. In a nice little and, dominant yeah. snort. There he is. He is Assertive okay. snort. So, um, let's go do the schedule first. Let let's me, not. Okay. Let's not. Let's play some pop-ups. I'm sorry well, really, I got angry talking? and hit you, baby. I just care about you so much. Literally this. Literally this. We're justifying being abusive to his fan base by saying that um, it's, it's actually okay. He cares so much about him that he gets stressed out and he gets abusive. The whole concern Wild shit, man. Bull. Who are going to upgrade? What a memories. wild, Give wild man! Here, submit clips. We're good. We have we have more than enough. In fact, <clears throat> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip, gonna skip, skip a it. lot because I have almost ten minutes worth of skip juice, and it tastes so good. Which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Now. Something interesting. So I'm just trying to see what's going on in the chat. Uh oh. What did they say wrong? Are they talking yeah, about football? Okay. Anyway. Stupidity. Um, oh, stupidity. Time down. Anyway, um, what do you expect from your chat, Phil? This is the community you created. These are the people that like you. You might want to be a little bit nicer to them. So tonight, I'm excited for tonight. Here's why. 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, right here on DSP Gaming. Stream 2, a gameplay hit YouTube. I think people were just waiting for the launch. And now that the game is out, the floodgates have opened. There is content all over YouTube of Tekken 8. And I was able to subscribe to a couple channels. Wow, look at this. A lot Hard of worker, Phil. To watch. So already, I already watched like a, a basics uh, combos for King. And I now know how to do juggle combos with him. And I was like, oh, that is like <clears throat> exactly what I needed. That's exactly what I needed to I need to study. I mean, being honest, it's like I'm like a scholar of <laughs> fighting games now. I have to He's like a fighting game scholar. Study these videos and figure out what's this, what's that, how are they, oh how are they doing, God. how are they timing it. And so today, I can't wait for tonight. I'm absolutely going to try to do Dude good is cracked out for uh, real. Wow. 
And we get a scholarly uh, you know, snort. Jack and it's gonna be fun. I don't know. I'm gonna get an Jack educational King snort. Tonight. I'd be down to just play the PhD of snorts. Or I could play with Paul as well for variety. But like I'm kind of liking King now because King is much more viable in Tekken 8 than he was in Tekken 7. His throw. Okay, I'm gonna skip this because uh, otherwise I'm gonna do a combo on myself. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which should have basically been the beginning. He wants to have conversations with the dance, but if you talk about anything other than Phil or the game, you get banned. Well, you can't have a conversation when you're so controlling over the people and what they should say. Conversation, it's a natural and organic thing, and it just happens. Of the game. It's not a thing that you can force. And not five hours in. It's like going on a first date with a girl, and just you get to decide what you talk about throughout the whole time. But I already talked about that on this stream today, okay? Cool. <laughs> then on working. Monday night, late stream, we're going to go back to Pal World, a game that I've got. Oh, no, I'm not going back. I don't want to go back. Play. You're right. But there's a good reason that I'm doing this mode, and it's twofold. Reason number one, Arcade Quest Mode allows you to pick any character, and you fight against a series of AI-controlled opponents of increasing And uh, I'm going to AI-controlled skip this. Makes sense, and try to learn basic combos and strategies, because then, on Tuesday night, I'm doing my next late-night stream of Tekken 8 multiplayer. And my Whoa. intention... You got to wait until Tuesday to see him play multiplayer. Um, I think it's going to be a great day on Tuesday, honestly. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. <laughs> right, Lily, Ju <laughs> I skipped literally three times. And every single time he said on Tuesday. Reminds me of the classic Come Tuesday promo. Hold on. Come Tuesday. It's fantastic. I love that idea. And this is going to get me blocked worldwide probably. So I'm just gonna play Come this. Come Tuesday. Come Tuesday. I love that idea. Moon, Reyna, King. Well, it won't be King. I already know King. Christy Montero. It will be. After about a week's hiatus, we're gonna jump back into it and continue where we left off. If you remember, we had just done the jailbreak with the gnomes, and they're escaping the prison. And we got to figure out what we want to do because I had no clue. And I said, I don't so want to Baldur's Gate Three again. You're gonna see Tekken and Baldur's Gate Three alternated his daytime streams undecided if i even want to bother trying to play this foam stars game if anyone's going to care about it um and also well people don't already care about the games you're playing so why not you might as well one video two videos three videos or more there was one month i thought i was making one i made five <laughs> what are we talking about this is How the many react channel problem. private videos i have to make for my patrons oh yeah I haven't seen yet. You know, no one's really spoken about it yet. I actually won't. Again, he's suffering from success. He's crying about making too much money. Dude, people keep giving me $50 for me to make a private video, dude. Come on. Stop it. Actually, don't. But for some reason, I'm complaining about it. even really know until the 1st of February. When pledge is clear, then I'll know. I don't know if I'm making one video, two videos, three videos, or more. There was one month I thought I was making one. I made five. <laughs> And then there's some ones I think I'm making like three or four and I make one. So it all depends for this month. I don't know. Dependent on if I need to make a bunch, that is going to determine essentially if I need Sunday night off from streaming to do those videos or not. In addition, like I said, I would definitely, definitely like to do another stream over on DSP Throwback because the first one did well and the content from that stream also did well. I'm like, I'd like to do another one where we continue on playing Red Dead 1 and I, I react. I do, you know, they call it retro react, right? I'm reacting to my retro content and doing commentary over the original playthrough. I would love to do that. But we have to get to that point where there's time to do it. And right now, I don't know if there's even time to do it. Maybe it needs to wait another week, you know, which sucks. I'd like to do it this week. But I don't know if I can do it this week or not. You know, I would love to say, hey, Sundays are React Sundays, where we got the React show on DSP Reacts, and then I do Retro React on DSP Throwback Sunday nights. But right now, it's just the cards aren't coming together to really do that, you know, especially because I might have to do private videos this month, this week coming up. So we'll see, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> that's kind of what's going on right now. I hope that sounds good to all of you. Oh, yeah, it sounds really amazing. Not only did you get to Hawaii. I'm going to watch all the streams and, like and uh, Dragon, make sure to support by dropping a dislike. Listen, I like King and Paul, but they're the characters I've played with for a very long time. And it'll be exciting tonight because I'm going to do juggles with King. New characters like uh, like Victor or Azucena. You should do juggling in real life like an actual clown that you are. Go to Yoshimitsu, the oddball character. I don't know. I, you know, I got to think about it. I don't know what I want to do right now. 
Um, but I got all these thoughts running through my head, you know. And then you know, it's just sad. But I think I think next week what we have to determine. And I want your feedback, by the way. Please leave comments on this video with your feedback. Yeah, DSP is the type of clown to juggle plastic plates. For those who aren't here, paper plates. I've seen some of the comments of those in chat, but I, I need the opinions of those who watch on demand. You guys are just as important as the live stream viewers. You have to understand that. You are. Oh. So I need uh information. Oh, it's not Leo, it's Leo. Okay. You're right. Actually, I knew that. I remember because when I played that Tekken, every time they said his name was Leo, Leo, and it, it, I always got confused because in the story they said it like that, and I totally forgot about that. You're right. Anyway, um, so I need your feedback. What do we do about this whole JRPG situation, right? It seems like whenever I play an RPG that's not Western-based or Western-developed, we run into the same problem. And the thing is... Here's the thing, pal. I'm going to give you my honest feedback. After 15 years in the biz, you should know what's best for your business. And you should know your audience well enough to not just sit here and ask them what they feel and what they think constantly. You should do what you think is best. And then take responsibility if that doesn't work out. I want... But that, that second part, that last part is the real problem. To get to the better parts of Like a Dragon. I want to unlock the Dondoko Island, but it seems like it's going to take me weeks. I don't know what to do, right? So anyway, please give me your thoughts, all right? Anyway, that's the schedule. And I want to say thank you to everyone who is supporting right now and helping because, like I said, this is the end of the month right now. And for me, right now, this has been a very rough month. I went from a really great month. Hey, we get a big. Earnings and everything in December. That's hype. To a month where literally everything's good. Views are fine. Everything is fine. But I have way less income because Hold basically on. memberships don't. Hold on. How, how are the views fine? We just started this stream by talking about how the views are not fine and the attendance been bad and also the support's been bad on top of that. Count for anything anymore, right? Did you forget I'm about that? Nothing from membership. I thought the views were, were bad. So if you were someone who was a member and got a gifted membership or if you were someone who normally would have come by and said, hey, I'm going to give some memberships to the community to help out this month. But you notice that there's so many members, it, doesn't, it wouldn't really affect anything. Please consider contributing in another way. Because right now what's happened is that it didn't happen. All those contributions that would have been memberships don't count anymore. And now I'm way down on revenue with only a few days left in the month, right? Now, someone made a suggestion yesterday. I think it was Sarah. She said, well, if this is the case, which sounds like, you know, it's truthful what I'm saying. Why not do a special event? Why not do a special fundraiser to make a up big the lost membership revenue? He just said yesterday that's a bad idea and he doesn't want to do it. Even though he's doing already a special event for Super Bowl. Left for 10 minutes and he's still talking about RPGs. Well, he, he looped back to it. He did the, the schedule segment first. Because I want to do that. That's what I used to do years and years ago. Back when I was in the midst of a, of a bankruptcy and everything was going awfully for me behind the scenes financially. I would do, oh my god, we got to do a special fundraising stream with goals set and everything. You know, those days are long behind me, and I want to keep them behind me. I don't want Except, what he said yesterday is that he's going to need the help, so if you can show up to his Super Bowl event and you can contribute, that's going to be super positive, and he's going to appreciate it. I want to go two steps forward, ten steps back. I sell vintage clothing, and I can promise you this is true. If I ran my biz like Phil does his, I would be trying to sell Walmart clothes for $100 a shirt and complaining because nothing is selling and asking my customers to just buy them to help out. Um, look, I, I don't exactly get this analogy. Can you try it with a sandwich shop? And maybe I'm going to understand because I'm not exactly sure. I'm not into the, the clothing business. Right. I'm into the sandwich I business. I that guy. It's like the begathon. Right? A I don't, bigathon. I do a marathon special event. I want it to be that. A marathon special event that we're doing for fun. Not because there's some underlying financial reason that I have to do it. Right? I think that I don't think that that's very fun for anyone. That, oh, we got to come to the stream and people got to start throwing money around. That You know what I mean? That's, that's shitty. And I know that. And I knew that back then, too. But I needed to do that to survive. Thankfully, I don't have to do that to survive anymore. Last month went well. Then I spent $1,000 on a game. Oh, yeah. Well, this was this was this month. This was a couple of days ago. It's the $1,000 champions pool. But then when I have a month like this, it's like I'm now I'm between a rock and a hard place. What the hell do I do, right? He spent a lot more than 1000 in December, though. Because right after Christmas, I think it was on the 26th, he was ranking number one.
in the weekly champions event for the first time ever. I have never seen him be number one before, but he actually made it. It was a Christmas miracle. So again, I urge you, if you're someone who likes my content, if you like this new stuff that I'm doing, if you like all the effort I'm putting in, if you like the fact that I'm listening to your feedback, I'm trying to do what you want, please support my content in any way you can, right? Any way helps. A legit membership or gifted membership to the community, a tip, a super chat, a super thanks, anything would help right now in any form. You know, I have three different channels. What about a you dislike? Can do them on, you know what I mean? You can become a member on any channel. You can do a super thanks on any video that's eligible, meaning it's not copyright claimed, right? But yeah, anything, guys, please. Um, much appreciation for everything out there. And again, you know, I know for a fact that people, you know, care about my content. They tell me about it all the time. <clears throat> it's just a matter of <clears throat> people will come by. Maybe they don't care enough to give you money, dude. That's just kind of it. In. That's always been a lot of people's attitudes when it comes to my channel. A lot of other people, it's like, well, I just watch every single thing that person puts out. I don't really feel like there's that many people who watch everything that I put out. I don't think that's the case at all. I think there's some people who watch my podcast. There's some people who watch fighting games. There's some people who watch RPGs. There's some people who like the React show. You know, it's all different people from all different walks of life, all different places all over the world, right? And is there some crossover? Yes, there is. But I have all these unique audiences. And so very much, you know, just take a look at the situation on DSP React. I talked about that for over a week before finally kind of sunk in with enough people that we got the stuff together for today's show. You know, <laughs> that's just how it is. It's like, it's hard. So he had to beg so hard that people just gave up eventually and paid up extra. Hard for me to get the word out about this kind of stuff because I have people who are watching different kinds of content in different places. So it doesn't necessarily, the word doesn't carry over. You know what I'm saying? Um, Maybe you should just uh, not spend two hours on a podcast and get everything covered within 15 minutes, probably. And you can do that. And you know, you can do that because he used to do that. It's just, t you know, again, I don't want to sit here on every stream that I do and say, hey, guys, so just so you know, because these memberships are fake or phony, I'm down on revenue, and can you help me? I don't want to do that every hour of every stream. You know, I bring it up now, and I'll probably bring it up, like, one time during the React show, and that's it. I don't want to sit here and just talk about it all day. I get exhausted. I'm tired of it. I hate doing it. You I'm know, not tired of time, it. Please <clears> keep I really doing it. I not bring it up at all. If you haven't noticed, it's only until these these really scumbag awful people again try to mess with me and my, my business and my livelihood that again I gotta bring it up right it sucks I don't wanna bring it up but they force me to they force my hand I have to let you guys know what's going on cause this is how I make my living it's not oh there's 10 other sources of income behind the scenes it's this is it so when they mess with it it affects everything you know so it's like if I ran a sandwich shop there and we go. served sandwiches with my special clum sauce for $5 and complained that nobody bought my sandwiches even though I make them six days a week. Maybe it's the clum sauce that's the problem and not the customers. Uh, no, I think they just don't understand the sauce. They should just understand it because it's, it's clearly authentic and Italian and they're just not Italian. So they don't get it. So it's... Uh, Probably their fault. Please support the streams if you can. And this this whole segment is just saying, please don't make me beg. So just give me the money so I don't have to beg. Don't force my hand, pay pigs. Thank you in advance. Um, tip big and tip I think often. We're just gonna get right to shout outs. Okay. So we start off today with Spider Dijon, twelve months as a supporter. Thank you so much, Spider Dijon, for twelve months as a member. I appreciate that very much. Big Mac with the first super chat of the day saying thanks for your meaningful content and persistently sticking to your schedule. Yeah, you know, that is, I, it, what's funny to me is when people say something like that, I'm like, sticking to a schedule, that's, what's the big deal? Because I take this seriously. I feel this is, yes, this is my hobby and my passion, but it's also my job. Dog, you literally yesterday told people to eat shit out of your ass with a spoon. And that's the very reason why I actually have a spoon today. So I'm ready in case something comes up. Or I'm just generally feeling hungry, you know? I understand that. This is important to me. To have a set schedule of content I'm putting out. To be here on stream every day at set times. To have a schedule so you know what's coming out every day. That's important to me. 
And then you guys every day tell me, actually, the reason why it's a big deal is because most streamers don't do that. Most streamers don't have a set schedule. Most streamers don't have set content. Even people who are 10 times more popular than you don't do it. I'm like, I don't know why. Why wouldn't you do that? If this is your job, why not take it seriously? Why not treat your audience with enough respect that you tell them exactly what you're doing and when you're doing it so they know when to show up and not be yanked around? Who are those people, though? And you know what I get? You know what I mean? Like, to me, I want you guys to be in line with all the stuff that I'm interested in, right? I want you to know I'm doing this game. I'm doing this session. This big event is going to happen on this stream because we got to this part of this game. You know, even you guys all the time, oh, so-and-so hasn't streamed in two days. Why? Did they did they come into some money or something that they don't have to stream? <laughs> I don't. Do they have a job or something or a family and friends that they want to spend time with so they don't want to stream every day? Wow, insane. Get it. It's almost like streamers are real people, except Phil. He's a fake person. You know, it's your job. He's a fantasy. So why aren't you there? He's a hallucination that, that we all away. share. It really does. Um, that people just aren't consistent in what they do. That's just fucking weird to me. You know? But anyway, thank you, Big Mac, for the super chat. I, I appreciate your kind words, okay? Um, Darth Fig did a $5 super chat. Says, we had a lot of Like a Dragon and Yakuza games. I'm sure people are burnt out. Baldur's Gate 3 is different, and we enjoy watching it. I think you guys like Baldur's Gate 3 for many different reasons. Uh, you know, I think everyone might have a different reason. Personally, I like it, but I'm not in love with it like you guys. Like, a lot of you people are like, oh, it's the best RPG ever. I don't even think that at all. I think it's good, but mostly the reason I like it is the narrative. There's the interesting narrative plot threads that are going on. The combat is, meh, it's all right. It's not great to me. Like, I get bored a lot of the time with the combat because of the way it's laid out. It's just annoying, but... You know, I do like the you know the game overall. So, but I, but fair enough. You have a good point. We played Like a Dragon, Ishin, then we played Like a Dragon Gaiden, and now we got Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth all within a year. Yeah, I think it these whale calls aren't working anymore. Nintendo hasn't been around since Christmas. Oik hasn't been around since Cat's first stream back. I think Cat pushed the whales away. And that's not a big girl pun. <laughs> well, it's almost like people don't have infinite money. And it's almost like the world is not in a great place today. So people have perhaps even less money than they usually would. It is overload. I'll be honest with you. So, I mean, like, how much can you, can you shake down the same five people over and over again? They can just, like, most of them can just drop a hundred bucks every once in a while. They can't do it every week. And he needs them to do it every week or we're getting segments like this. They're kind of doing the same thing Pokemon was doing. And that's what happens when you uh, put your whole fate into the lives of people that you can count on your hands and perhaps even your feet if you're being generous. And then if one of them goes away, that leaves a big dent in your income. And the same thing Assassin's Creed was doing. Very They're big dent. They're uploading way too many games in a year. And interest is going to wane when you're oversaturating the market, Right. Because I remember back in the day when he was used, uh, when he was doing whale calls and uh, especially when he started doing the, the beg tweets, he was getting people show up and, and drop them like actual 50s, 100s and stuff like that because they wanted to help out. And now it just doesn't work. It's, it's like his superpower is gone. I think it's just unfortunate timing to have Gaiden and then Infinite Wealth right after. That was kind of like, I don't know what they were thinking there. Um, thank you to the Roman Victor. Who became a member this morning? He says, Phil is love, Phil is life. I love your content. Well, thank you very much, Roman Victor and Kathleen. Also, with the membership this morning. And that's so the thing with all. him, also. Uh, something that maybe some of the dent heads are starting to realize is the more you support him, the more he will expect that you continue to support him. So if you drop him 100 memberships this month, he's low key going to be expecting that you do it again next month, or else the memberships are going to drop and he's going to start begging for a member bomb again. To, come, to make up for those lost memberships. So it's just a cycle that never ends. I appreciate that very much. Now we swing over to the tip side of things. And first of all, FYI, I just want to let Slayer know if, they're list if Slayer's listening, because I'm pretty sure Slayer is listening to the podcast and probably not live, but on demand. Your tip did finally come through. It was actually Slayer who tried to do a dollar tip yesterday morning. And it got randomly selected to be frozen and reviewed <laughs> by PayPal. Why? Because is Slayer a terrorist? 
Why is Slayer doing dollar tips? Bro, you're an actual pay pig. Step up. Pony up, my guy. Released this morning. A dollar? So that dollar tip did count. All right. So I guess we'll count it for this morning. But in the meantime, Slayer had tipped another dollar. And That's the thing, man. That's the thing with the United States of Phil. He banned all the Argentinian people. The Japanese people are getting banned soon. And, you know, the TSA at the United States of Phil is getting overly suspicious at foreigners. And you guys know that Slayer is from Singapore and it's, it's hard to get through the border. Someone went through and didn't get flagged for review. So like I said, it really is just a random selection process by PayPal when they do that. I, again, like you're at airport security and you're going through the airport and all of a sudden a guard flags you and says, hey, just so you know, you're the randomly selected person to be screened. You got to come to the side. It's just luck of the draw. It doesn't necessarily mean there was anything wrong with your contribution. It's just it's just luck of the draw. So, um, so Slayer did a second dollar tip this morning <clears throat> and says... I want to check if you get if you re read the tip message I sent yesterday. No, because it was flagged. Because it's flagged, I don't get to see the tip message. He says, In Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, I am now about 11 and a half hours in. Uh, I've done a lot of the side missions. Some of them lead to their own interesting mini games. I'm still in Chapter 3 and Level 12, but I'm enjoying the game a lot. So there you go. And you know what? That's about the level I think that my wife is at as well. You know, she's in Hawaii. So Shout out my wife. Running around doing side quests and stuff. And she's telling me she's having a blast, you know. So once you get to that point, the game sounds great. But you need to get to that point, And that's what we're working on. So cool. Thank you, Slayer. <clears throat> I received a $5 tip from Anso Kamaru. All right. And I want to see what they have to say. They basically say they respectfully disagree with me. Well... There's no way you can respectfully disagree. You either completely agree with me, you're on my side. Or you grab or a spoon. I'm just kidding, by the way. That's a complete joke. No, he's not kidding. Yesterday he said, whenever I say something, you need to... What did he say? What was the exact quote? I forgot already. But he, he said you basically need to take it. Uh, it appears the animations are frozen. For some reason, the browser... I'm going to actually check load. that out did now. Just play it? Just yeah, just because wow. I'm petty. That took like an ages to play. I wonder what happened there. I don't know if this is uh, a part of this. Thing. How about this? Right? This is for years. So shut I'm the sorry, fuck up. Factual observation. On my streams, the black and white mentality. Even you before me or your my balls. No, I'm just, okay, you know, this is not a part of this clip. This is a very good clip. World, right? So Anzo Kamaru says... I understand where you're coming from on the topic of pacing. I respectfully disagree. Here's why. When someone is playing a video game, they want to be immersed in its story, world, lore. As you're a streamer, you have to be constantly worried about the mood and interest of your audience rather than your own. That could translate to you being way more impatient than you would normally be. Does make games for gamers. That's 99% not streamers. Actually, that's wrong. More and more people are making content than ever before, and it's going to continue to increase in the future, so I actually do disagree with that point. Yeah, that's why you're getting more and more washed up by the day. I've noticed over the years you constantly had issues with slower-paced games, which translates to the disdain for the game because your audience isn't feeling it. It's not just my audience, it's me as well. It's a shame that you cannot fully enjoy JRPGs anymore due to length. There are already a shit ton that you skip as it is. I feel this too because I'm pretty busy and I can't get to them all. No, you have to understand something. You're right, but you're not 100% right. You're absolutely right in saying that the stream is a factor. You're correct. I have an audience. I have to make sure that what I'm doing is entertaining to my audience. But as I'm getting older, I want more interesting gameplay because I have limited time. As the, the older you get, you How do you have limited time? Right, your time is more valuable. Bro, you're 40. Valuable. When you're younger, you've got lots of time to go, right, in your life. You're like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I, I'm bored. I'll waste time. I ain't got time to waste. I don't. I really don't. I have time that I need to spend doing What are we doing right now? Mind. And if I'm sitting here and the first five hours of a game is a cutscene, that's not meaning of use of my time. Get me immersed in your game first. Get me hooked on a good game with good gameplay elements, interesting, funny, in good stuff. Then explain the story to me. Don't bombard me with cutscenes right from the get-go. And that goes for any video game. Any, I want to see the game first be hooked on the good parts of your game first then tell me the story that makes me continue to want to play it not story 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 oh you died wait what oh the game actually started but there was so much story you didn't realize it see your controller's over there and you died oh
I want to do this in like 10 times the speed because it's really fucking funny. Nah. Story, 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 Oh, the game actually started, but there was so much story you didn't realize it. See, your controller's over there and you die. Oh. Oh, man. Shit. And, and this this podcast was so bad that this is a highlight of the stream. Right? <laughs> so. Again, it, it's about balance, right? Because I don't think, ultimately, if it's a game that's all gameplay, too, I want a good story. I want both. Right? So that's the thing. Oh, and we got a really a juicy both. We're getting a, a instant replay of that too. It, it's about balance, right? Because I don't think ultimately, if it's a game that's all gameplay too, I want a good story. I want both, right? So that's the thing. I need. I want a good balance of both, and I think that's a problem that a lot of game developers are currently having in the modern era. They don't have the balance. They're either really good at one or really good at the other. And they don't have that pacing and balance. And by the way, this is what's funny. You understand that I criticize all games equally. Like, the same the game that had the same problem was The Last of Us 2. The pacing was atrocious. The plot was all over the place. It was like, first the plot's here. Then something bad happens. But that should have probably happened at the end of the game. But it happened at the beginning of the game. Then you flash to this scene. Then you flash forward. Then you flash back. Then you do this. The pacing was atrocious in The Last of Us 2. You know? they fucked it up bad if they just ordered that game differently it would have been a better game and i feel like that's kind of the same problem that i'm seeing in like a dragon infinite well okay let's continue i received please let's continue what do we got a 25 from one minute man oh, very generous oh 50 41 dollar tip whoa 41 buckaroos everybody thank you so very now we're much having a for 41 dollar tip yo back in the day when he did this clown shit with the very generous and everything he would get like 200 dollars. and now we're popping for 40 uh from a sven gunner that's their name sven gunner yeah, that guy is definitely uh, not a sock account. Time flies. It's and you get the pop-up for $30. That's great. <laughs> it's been a year since I started watching your streams. They're now part of my daily routine. All the best to you and your family. Well, thank you so much to Sven Gunner. Thank you so much. For thank you, thank you, thank tip. you. And with that, you are saving the stream now. Because once we start reacting, oh my god, the well is going to run dry immediately. And tips on today's stream. Thank you, Sven. And cheers to you. I'm glad that you're enjoying the stuff. Happy year anniversary. I received a $2.25 contribution from Mr. Buffy Nipples. Why didn't you play Prince of Persia? Because I didn't have time. It was a 25-hour Metroidvania that released in the middle of January when you guys had already had me start Baldur's Gate 3 and I had other new releases right on the horizon. There's no time for it. Again, I keep telling you, my time is valuable. Really? And I'm getting pulled in. Why, then why are we playing half an hour of music before we actually start the content? And then we're doing half an hour of Q&A where people ask you the same shit every single day. In so many directions these days, I don't have time to play these more minor releases and Prince of Persia is a very minor release in the scheme of things. Although the games media overblown praised it because there was no other games out at the time, right? You notice now that now new releases are hitting, no one's talking about it like it never existed. This is what happened with Hi-Fi Rush too. It's a situation where there's a game that comes out and it's good, but it's not necessarily like, oh my God, jaw-droppingly, groundbreakingly great, but it's good, it's a good game. And all the media covers it like it's the bee's knees. Oh my god, it's so amazing. Game of the year contender. Da, da, da. And then another game comes out and it's like, huh? No one ever, you know, what are you talking about? Wait, what game are you, huh? What's Hi-Fi Rush? I never heard of that. Right? <laughs> That's what happens, you know? Early on in the year, you get games that get highlighted for like a minute. And then people forget they ever existed. And I think that's what's happening here with Prince of Persia is that it's just a game that it's not... It's not a bad game, don't get me wrong. It looked great in the previews and everything that I watched. Well, I mean, it's not exactly getting a lot of hype seeing how it's a, you know, side-scrolling, I guess a Metroidvania type of game. Those don't usually get a lot of hype. Because uh, I know people have been craving, like, classic Prince of Persia action. 
and this is is uh, not it from what it looks like. It's something different, and it definitely looks fun, but it's not it, it's not the thing people have been asking for. They should just um, remaster the old ones. But At the least. They were like, oh, yeah, it's a 25-hour-long Metroidvania. And I was like, well, when am I going to play that? It comes out, like, right before the other new releases of the month. There's no way that I'm going to beat it before then. You know? What can you do? So, I skipped it. Like I said, if you guys wanted me to go back to it at some point later in the year, there's definitely going to be periods of downtime where there's going to be things, no games coming out or whatever. And if you guys wanted to see me play a game like that, then that I would absolutely consider it. But as of now, I Phil I just... talks about not wanting too much story, but when he explains anything, it's always stoy, 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 stoy. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's how it is, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> stoy, 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 stoy. Cool. That was a very fun segment. Not in the way that he intended uh, it to I be. I received a but four dollar fun segment regardless. He said, "This is Adam uh, theory, theory. I'm excited for your react stream. This is the first week I've submitted a video for it. Oh, cool. Well, I look forward to doing the react stream every week. It's a good variety for my content for sure. I love the show. Yeah, thanks for paying yeah. the two dollars extra, to see cuck boy. This week, um, I'm assuming you probably went to the submissions tier and you put it into the the uh, thread there, in which I do a randomized playlist." So we'll see if we get to your video this week or not. If not, don't be disheartened. If you remember, you got four weeks where you get a chance to be watched. But the thing is, um, I would say chances are increased right now for people's videos to be watched only because... Except, it, uh, unless it's the Derek birthday video, that's, that's not happening. That is not getting watched ever. And he knows why, because he's definitely seen it. And he is trying on purpose to avoid it, because it's not a good look for his community. You know, I think I think this week there's like ten to twelve ultra member submissions, and then there was like twenty something standard member submissions. So we got to get through the ultra first. But once we do, you know, depending on how long those clips are, we'll see how long it takes to get through them. But hey, big up King really of Prominence for twenty two months, dude. Right now, so. Here is good fifty stuff, gifted right? spoons. Oh my god! Okay. I hope they're um, real and not counterfeit. I received he's just a, like me, FR, FR. Yeah, he's just like me too, fra 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 fra. A twenty-five dollar tip. From one, one minute, man. Minute I think man. you should make Baldur's Gate three your main game. Well, one minute, man. Of course you say that because you're a huge fan of Baldur's Gate, right? <laughs> You've been there all along. You've been giving me tips and pointers and talking about the game, so I totally understand your perspective. Yeah, I'm gonna understand skipping this because I hate the one minute man messages. They sound like they're made with Chat GPT. It's always some dick sucker message. And some power. It's like, hey, Phil, I like you playing that game. You should um, play it more, okay? Be the variety I like we'll it. On the night streams, okay? Now, I'm not saying that I will never do a day stream of Like a Dragon, especially if we're in a major part and I want to make good progress. Maybe I would do one. But I definitely think that Baldur's Gate 3 has been working. Big up's uh, forever stream. bald for 13 months. shows up for it that supports it. So it makes Stay sense bald, bro. to have it in the rotation and keep going with it. Plus, I'm 60 hours in, right? And if I downgrade it to a game that I'm only playing once or twice a week on a late stream, and I'm, I went from nine to ten hours a week to four, you know, when are we gonna finish this game? Thanksgiving? Maybe. Maybe we finish it over the turkey, right? I don't know. All right. So with all of that, guys, thank you so very much for your early support. Now keep in mind. Are we gonna open to Q and A or are we finished? To the react show. Oh no, we're gonna when open we go up to the Q and A. I'm not gonna reset the goals. So if we happen to get a few more tips on the react show, we can see a silly hat at a hundred. Maybe a vest at 150, depending on how the show goes. You know, it would be great to get that level of support today. I really need the help for the end of the month. Please consider it. All right. Outside of that, we just have a few more minutes. If anyone wants to do some Q and A, do you have any comments on anything that we talked about today? Is there anything that's going on that you want to talk about that I haven't mentioned today? All right. Please tag me in the chat and let's see what is on everyone's mind before we get ready to swap over to DSP Reacts. Okay. Expand Dong says, I think you should listen to your heart and change your philosophy to not force yourself to finish every game that comes out. There's no reason to unless you really love a game. The thing is, Expand Dong, I'm not playing games I don't like. Do you understand? Like, I pick the games that I think I'm going to particularly like and enjoy. Like, if, like by, by your... Seriously, by what you're saying, you're basically saying I never would have played Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, yeah, I'm doing the reacts. Right? I feel pretty good like, right now. To me... Baldur's Must be all the beer I've been drinking. Right? I didn't get it. I was I had no intention of playing it, and then people convinced me over a series of months to finally try it. 
So literally by what you're saying is never listen to feedback or anything. Just go with your heart. So I never would have played Baldur's Gate 3. So I think that would have been a bad choice. No. You see? I'm playing games that I want to play. I want to play Tekken. I want to play Like a Dragon. I want to play Sea of Stars. And I got to put that on hiatus for months. So, <laughs> you see? And I told you that basically what I the way I see it is... Sadly, I just don't have a connection with my audience when it comes to JRPG style games. I love them, and my audience just in general doesn't. And that's sad because I like them so much, you know? Hmm. A nice, delicious sip of seltzer Did water. Did I ever play a Cat in the Hat game? No. No. If it came out around the time of the movie, I didn't even see the movie. I've never seen the Cat in the Hat movie with Michael Myers. Nope. You should. It's fun. Michael Myers is a fun guy. Oh, uh, hold on. That's not what he was saying. Then what was he saying? He's literally well, not saying, not Michael Myers, Mike Myers. Listen but also Michael Myers, Myers is also a pretty fun guy. Game that comes out he likes chilling, interacting, game. stabbing, Again, murdering. I, I pick and choose games that I like. All the things that I, I like. He's, uh, he's just like me, life. dude. Right now, every game that I'm playing, I'm enjoying. Every single one. I like like a dragon. I'm enjoying. I can't wait to get to Hawaii, where it's gonna pick up and get more interesting. I, I like Tekken Eight right now. It's fun. I think Pal World is a really cool, chill game. I'm, I'm enjoying hanging out with you guys when I play that. Like everything I'm playing, I like. Did he did he figure out that you can name the the pals in the game so he can shake the dance dry so they can name a pal? So I don't get the point. Remember the Pokemon scam? Oh, so just so you know, guys, for twenty dollars you get to name a Pokemon. Oh, wow, Jade wants to name a Pokemon. How are we going to call this one? Oh, we calling it D's Nuts. <laughs> That's really funny, Jade. Oh, Derek wants to name a Pokemon. How are we calling this one? Oh, Yo Mama. Oh, you get it? It's like Yo Mama joke. <laughs> Wait, uh, what game am I forcing Yeah, that was, uh, that was a classic. That I don't like. I'm, I'm lost. Right? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did he try? But it didn't work out. Oh man, it's all the all the classic Dunsford techniques are not tip. working Why anymore. He needs to message? evolve his begging game. About. He needs to fake a life-threatening illness for profit. That's what he needs to do. That's the next level of begging. Whoever just did a dollar anonymous tip, I have no idea what you're speaking of. What is he speaking of? Are you saying that you you already contributed? Is it in Spanish? I, I didn't get the message then, because <laughs> this is the first message I saw. Literally, I just saw that one. That was it. So, I don't know. Sorry about that. Unless someone's trying to mess with me, which could be too. Maybe you should be even more paranoid. They are trying to mess with you, Phil. They are inside of your walls. Nosey Real Vibe says, with Starfield being on Game Pass, is it is it worth it to play it now? Yes. If you like the... I mean, since it's on Game Pass, if you have Game Pass, you can just check it out and see if it's worth it. It's not that big of a deal. The 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 worst thing is having to download it because it's a pretty big game. It's like eighty to hundred gigabytes. Formula that Bethesda uses for games like Fallout and and Starfield, or excuse me, Fallout and Skyrim is what I should have said, or just Elder Scrolls in general. You'll likely enjoy Starfield. You probably won't be blown away because they really don't do much in that game to innovate. It just feels like they took the elements from their already existing franchises and slapped them together and then added, oh, you could build spaceships. Well, do you ever have to? No. So why is it in the game? I don't know. Oh, you could fly around the galaxy. Okay, well, do you have to? No. You could explore planets. Do you have to? No. Building bases on planets? No. Don't need to do that. How about crafting and upgrading weapons? No. Don't need to do that. Why is it in the game? I don't know. It's just in there. So what I mean? That, that's how the whole game is. Every element that's good in the game has already been done in another Bethesda game. If you're okay with that, then play it. But if you're looking for, oh, the next hot IP, innovation, and new stuff, there's zero of that. Literally zero. It feels like all the games you've already played already. <clears throat> thoughts on, thoughts on the, the Fortnite Battle Pass? Yes, it's called Absence of Thought. I don't care about the Fortnite Battle Pass. I don't care about Fortnite. I know nothing about it. There we go, except you've played it before. Did I ever finish Starfield? Yes, we did. We finished it. Indeed, we did. And it was terrible. <laughs> Just like I suspected. Uh, I was like, wow. They really screwed that one up. Uh, Hold on. Yes. Now that he said Fortnite Battle Pass, it triggered a memory. Hold on. 
Yes, it is almost February. That's correct. Not that th this year it's, February uh, is weird. Yeah, it's, there it's are a lot of this song. February, Hold on. But almost nothing big is big or notable. Hell, I just shit out my ass, put it on my PC, cause I need need to get that Fortnite battle pass. I like Fortnite. Did I mention Fortnite? I like Fortnite. It's night. Epic. I mean, epic. That's epic content. Now remember, come to Network Adventure Time. Epic. Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's like everything's just kind of like a placeholder appeaser until Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> when will I release the Kung Fu Panda vids on DSP Throwback? First of all, to make this abundantly clear, because I tried to explain it to people, um, I there's there's not a lot of them. There's maybe a small handful of them. I think I played the game. Man, for like it's 90 it's minutes. so annoying the way that his uh, ring light reflects in his glasses. It, it's really obnoxious for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's just because he does it, and everything he does is obnoxious because he does it, and he does it in the most obnoxious way possible. It, and then I just never went back to playing the game ever again. So it's a playthrough that I had play I planned on maybe doing as a as a silly one, and I just never I never went back and finished. So. It's not a lot of videos, you know. At most, it would be maybe two, three videos for the channel, but it's unfinished. It's just old content that's kind of lost media content. When am I doing it? Right now, the focus on the channel is Final Fantasy XIII and Red Dead alternating every day. That's a lot of work as it is. Every day, editing together the videos, upscaling, releasing. There's not really extra excess time to be putting out other bonus playthroughs. Um, You know, I could look into it. What I would have to do is dive further into those hard drives there and see what else is on there that I has not been uploaded elsewhere or maybe it's just a forgotten piece of media right um and and try that out we have to see I have to see what's on there there are actually a forgotten some piece of media that's been lost for a while but I have no plans to release the kung fu panda stuff soon unless there's demand for it so <clears throat> genetics we already talked about that the other day about Xbox going all digital watch the podcast from about 2 days ago for that Yes, in general, the feedback I'm getting is that you guys really like thumbnails on the videos now. Now that the style is... Then, then if they like them so much, why, why aren't those videos getting more views? They're getting less views than they usually would. Change instead of just being <clears throat> a generic picture with a number to now actually have a, a, a frame from that particular video that's referencing something going on and to have the title oh, of the video. Okay, let's, uh, let's actually check them out. Yo you know, be something catchy and interesting. Hello. So you know directly what's happening in each video. The general consensus. Wow, I'm look at this. You guys like, right? Uh, the one thing I respect are the frames. Um, Cause I do them too and I like doing them. Um, and uh, everything else is super generic. It's like profoundly generic. It's just the name of the game, a screenshot of the game and a number. That's it. That's, that's the thing he's so proud of. And like I said, these videos are not getting more views now that he's changed his whole thumbnail game. They're really not. They look better, I admit, but doesn't work. Excuse me. No, you're not excused. Try muting next time. By the way, I just I do want to say this. FYI, just to, I, and I'm going to say this on the React channel as well. FYI, as you know, I make the playlist for the React show the night before. So if anyone posted anything up between last night and this morning, I didn't see it, and it's not going to be on the show. You do have to get your video nominations up the day before, before the end of my final stream, because at the end of my night stream, that's when I do the playlist. That's when I did it last night. Okay, pal. Uh, I have okay. no idea if anyone put. I haven't even looked, but if anyone posted up, yeah, it ain't going to be in there, and there's nothing I can do about that. You got to be, you know, doing it before, you know, the night before. Like I said, it's always been the rule of thumb, but I will mention that over on the channel as well. Okay, after this pre-stream, I'm actually excited to watch him react to videos because some of those videos might actually be entertaining. Yes, of course, uh, he's going to skip right. through most of Any it and probably watch a total of like 15 seconds of each video or maybe at best a minute, but at least it's going to be something that is not him talking about how much Any he needs support. Ever plans on the weekends? Depends. Depends on how old I was, who were my friend group at that time. I mean, in general, when I was a kid is a spanning a long time, right? In general, my, most of my time was spent outside playing in the neighborhood with the neighborhood kids. And as I got older, it was going to arcades 
on Friday and Saturday nights to play Street Fighter. Yeah, I do also mm -hmm. want to see how many troll submissions Kathleen, made I'll it through. I'm very curious. That's good. one of the reasons why I'm sticking around today cool. and watching it. Why don't I do a stream where people tip and send me video clips to watch? Uh, very simple answer to that one. Because he can't screen them. Uh, you can't screen videos on the fly like that. Like, for example, if I had a team of editors and people working with me... You actually do. Remember the DSP throwback channel? Those people working for free? That is a team of editors. You admitted that yourself. Who would screen content on the fly during a live stream? Then I could do it. But I'm a one-man show. Who, you know, I... Wow, I'm a one-man show. Well, that's, uh, sure, man. I can't just have people send me random clips. And I... Except the people making his thumbnails, people editing his videos for their React channels, people making his avatars for his channels, and the banners for his channels. Outside of that, he's a one-man show. I hit it on the stream and it's something fucked up. And the people that pay to send him a video so he can watch and make content out of it. Outside of that, he is a one-man show, if you ignore everything else. And now I get into trouble because I watched a random clip on a stream didn't know what it was, right? You gotta understand that there's a lot of people out there that don't like me. So imagine someone sends me like a $20 tip. Oh, here's a, a clip. I click on it, it's fucking nudity or something, or, you know, gore, murder, and I get fucking banned. You know? So I can't do that. Again, if I had a screening team of people who I could employ to do it, because big streamers do that, they actually have people working with them on a stream, and they'll screen clips coming in and send them the good ones, the clean ones. Yeah, because they pay them to watch. I don't have that. <clears throat> Sure, we're the small guy again. We are still the small guy. Chimp Thoughts tipped me a dollar. Says, Baldur's Gate 3 is good, but a lot of reviewers didn't play Act 3. It shows because it falls off a cliff and it really buggy. When Like a Dragon opens up, it's epic. I sent him a tip earlier. Maybe it didn't go through. Uh, yeah, if you sent a tip earlier today, I didn't see it. Guys, I, I should say this. Perhaps what's happening here is the same thing that happened a few weeks ago where a few tip messages are not coming through. And obviously, I apologize for that. If you guys are noticing that pattern, if you're tipping and I'm not shouting it out, uh, please let me know. And maybe what I'll have to do is start manually yeah. checking PayPal maybe, again. Which maybe is, actually you can send another tip to see if it works. Sucks if that's the case. And make it as big as possible because maybe, I don't know, man, maybe just the dollar tips are not making it through. So try 20, 50 maybe. I'm sure for 100, it's going to go through for sure. If you want to be safe, send 100 because that's a pain in the ass to do. And you can send 200s in two separate tips just in case the first one doesn't get through. He's going to get the second one. Um. As a proud South American Spreacts member, it'll be weird having the luxury of knowing who submitted what on this show. I hope my submissions make the cut. I spent my week's ARS on him. <laughs> Poop. Poop. Well... Well, if it didn't work, you can try next week with your next week's uh, ARS, man. But well, hopefully... Maybe uh, he just missed your case. submission, dude. But Who I knows? Just saw this tip, so Things happen. <sighs> well, 90s guy now says Act 3 is being completely Big fixed. Up, uh, uh, Javier from Buenos Aires. Not buggy anymore. Okay. Aries? Whatever. All right, Derek, I'm I'll see on the React channel. And yes, today's episode 49. Next week. Next week is episode 50. And... Technically, the week after that is the one-year anniversary of DSP React. Yeah. Wow. The one-year anniversary of the channel coming up, so. Good stuff, Burnell. We made it one year. And he only threatened to stop doing the channel, well, like, five Call times. Duty right now, no. It's remarkable. But I always have it as a possibility for variety. Like I said, that's one of the possibilities we're thinking about for the Super Bowl event. To just do, like, a one-off multiplayer for like an hour oh yeah i'll be drinking so yeah nothing says super bowl like call of duty yeah be buzz trying to play call of duty which would be pretty funny actually um you know that's something that and I'm again sure. again we're baiting people into paying him so he can drink the former alcoholic oh my guys you guys you know what's gonna be really fun if somehow like we get a couple of large contributions and i get buzzed it's gonna be so fun for that but it's not something that i'm going to have majorly in the schedule right now already i don't have enough time to play all the games that i'm playing now so no i'm not going to be interjecting other stuff into there too <clears throat> okay as i've already said sea of stars is on hiatus and will resume uh never many 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 years later many years later wow many 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 weeks later 
We're definitely yeah. going to get... Whenever it comes back, it's going to be completely cold. Nobody's going to care. Because people miss the original couple parts, so they're not going to give a fuck. Through at least, probably, you know, a couple of months, I would think, before it comes back. Because, I, like I said, I want to bring back Sea of Stars when I have time to dedicate to it. When I have time to sit down and have it and be in the rotation regularly. Not, oh, I play it once in a blue moon. I want to have it consistent progress. So we're going to wait for that. By the yeah. way, Mr. Hard Worker is now live on the Reacts channel, and he's been playing music for the last 10 minutes. So we got about 20 minutes left of music, you guys, until we with get Kat, to the it's a two -man show. content. With Cat, it's a two-man show. It's a... I guess it's a family show, we can say. A family of uh, multiple humans. And a feline right. son. By the way, Sir Ed Sheeran, I don't know if you know because you weren't here last night, your tip from the day before cleared. So I actually did count it on that stream and gave you a shout-out. But it cleared when you weren't here, I think. So you might not have been aware, but it did go through. So thank you for that. If Phil and Kat <clears throat> a child, who do you think it All right, would be better guys, off looking like? Let's end the I show. I cannot. And remember pick. what happens is you're going to see a pop-up on your screen when the show ends that says, Hey, everybody, head over to DSP Reacts for a fun React show. And I hope that you will do that. The show should be fun today. A lot of interesting variety, right? And uh, thank you for a great podcast. Thank you for your feedback. The feedback, remember, I'm looking for. What to do about JRPGs in the future? Do I play them? Do I skip them? Do I play them more reservedly? What do we do with Like a Dragon? Do I continue to play it more? Do I play it less? Do I downgrade it to night streams? Do I bring? Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. To hear from don't play you it at all. On these topics. Wow, sleepy boy. It's around like 1 p.m. his time, by the way. He's sleepy. Oh, look oh, at this. I'm stretching. Sorry. Yeah, right. you are. And I hope to see you over on the React channel. If I don't see you, we'll be safe. And tomorrow, I'm sure I'll be talking all about not only the React show, but how my second multiplayer stream with Tekken 8 went and more. Okay? Swap over. Yeah. Not okay. What Man, do we get I'll for the rest of this? I'll shout that out over on DSP Reacts. Okay? Just a few minutes break for me to swap over to the React channel. And we get a swap break and probably go to the bathroom and pretend something else is going on so we waste everybody's time. Yep, 12 minutes in and we're playing music. Very interactive. So let's watch the DSP Gaming uh, Daily Wrap from yesterday. Because he talks about his huge toxic rant. If you haven't heard that, make sure to check out the stream from yesterday because that shit was fun. But I'm going to play you just a sample of it. Just a sample. Just one minute. Like a one minute man I am. I don't know what the fuck idiots are talking about with memes and shit. Oh, it's like, he's just like me. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't follow your dumb fucking memes. So take your meme and show it up your fucking ass because I have the ability to make an observation that's factually fucking based. And I want this clip for the soundboard. This is a must-have clip. ...based. Just because I'm dark Asian, that's factually fucking based. Just because I'm dark side filled, it means I get to ignore fucking facts that the characters in this game are going through what I go through on a daily fucking basis. Shut the fuck up. Just look at the facial expressions, man. This is th these are the faces of pure, unadulterated rage. And it's also stronger by the fact that he can't do anything about it. He's completely powerless. So it's impotent rage. I'm not taking your shit. Yes, you are. I don't care who the fuck it is. There's people in the chat right now. Oh, he's doing a meme. Oh, this is cringe. Shut the fuck up and eat it. Eat it. Eat Give it. Your mailing address. I want to mail you a spoon. Uh, by the way, I want to have a huge shout out to Phil, who mailed me a spoon. So now, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to let him tell you what I'm going to do. So you can eat shit out of my fucking ass. Exactly. I'm starving right now. And I can even do a Meerkat Tries It. Scat edition. I'm tired of people saying that because I am who I am. I can't say a factual observation. It's a fucking fact that the characters in that game are going through what I have factually gone through on a daily fucking basis for years. So shut the fuck factually up. Factually fucking based. I am not putting up with any of this shit ever again. You're going to tell me I can't make a factual observation? How about you kiss my fucking ass and lick my balls? How about we don't do that? I'm not really into that. But maybe your wife is. Uh, so let's see this one, the daily wrap. And I, I'm just going to jump to the good segment because everything else is dog shit. So let me just look up control F and look up animated. Because animated gives us the good content.
and Infinite Wealth and Tekken 8, giving my opinions on each. And I had a segment where I got incredibly animated and emotional. Animated and emotional. Because people... This is what this is. This is how he explains it to you. He just got a little bit animated. Uh, actually, not a little bit. Incredibly animated and emotional. People on the internet tend to think that because... Oh, a lot of people make fun of him and, and, you know, call him a lol cow or whatever. That apparently I don't have the right to state facts. Okay? For example, me playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and getting through the first three hours, I found tons of parallels in the story of Ichiban Kasuga and my own life. I mean, the whole beginning of the game's story is that he is harassed online by a bunch of people making up conspiracies about him that are not true and don't have concrete proof of, but they still push them forward as truth for personal gain on the internet. That's literally my life story. It's literally his life story. It's fucking based. It's based on a, on a true story. Like, literally, that's fucking what happens based. to me on a daily basis. So when I say that, I mean it. It's not a joke. It's not, and if you, oh, it's a meme that, oh yeah, I'm just like, Kimmy. no, there's no meme. There's no meme. You're an idiot. Yes, there is a meme. I'm actually going to show you. Uh, in case you didn't watch TBS today, please do. It was a very fun show. And we did a tier list of uh, a bunch of his meltdowns. Uh, and we talked extensively about this segment and clowned on it because it's very fun. So the meme is called literally me for real for real. And I'm going to tell you exactly what this is about. So I look up the Know Your Meme website that tells you all about memes. And this is what they say about this meme. I'm going to let the bot read it because I, I love her uh, beautiful, soft voice. Wow, this is literally me refers to a series of images in which a certain individual relates to characters from films, TV shows, and other media, usually outsider figures with certain redeemable qualities. The images are used to poke fun at these individuals due to their supposed lack of the positive qualities that the film characters possess. There we go. Because he assumed a bunch of the positive qualities from uh, uh, Ichiban, the, the Mr. Ichiban over there in Japan, who was actually a very positive Yakuza guy who was a hero to his community. And he assumed those qualities to himself to make this uh, his life story. I'm just like, Kimmy, no, there's no meme. There's no meme. You're but there's no meme because uh, he says so. Even though I think that is pretty factually fucking based. You're an idiot. All right, it's truthful. I yeah, if you think it's a meme because it's uh, exactly the textbook definition of what this exact meme is about, the literally me syndrome, uh, then you're an idiot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break this to you. I'm sorry that I had to give you this diagnosis, but it is true. It is true. He says so. It's his right to say so. To go through this stress every day. He has the right. Saying and doing Constitutional shit rights to be I fucking no based. I just ignore it, but fucking it's all based. over the internet every day. These scumbags who just besmirch me and my reputation and my and anything to do with me uh, turn every positive into a negative, just like they're doing to Kasuga in this game, right? Exactly. So, <clears throat> he might just be called Kasuga Burnell because he's just so similar, except he's not balding and he doesn't have a patchy goatee. That's the only difference. Basically, um, I see that parallel. And I have the right to talk about that publicly and say I see it as a parallel. And yeah, you do. You definitely do have the right. I give him this. I agree with that. He has the freedom to say that this relates to him and that's literally him. And people have the right to say that it's cringe and that it doesn't relate to him. Be taken seriously. And if people don't want to take me seriously, I don't care about those people. They're scum. All right. So basically, I talked about that. On so if you don't want to take him seriously, you're scum and he doesn't care about you, even though he had a huge rant about how he hates you and you're fucking wrong. Podcast this morning, but also talked honestly about my thoughts about each of those games, having played them on launch day on Friday. Um, that was really all we had really time for. And then we went into the first stream today. And also a really good part of this rant is the way he says, it's literally me for real, for I real. Listen to this. I don't know what the fuck idiots are talking about with memes and shit oh it's hold on oh uh, this is a very nice one hold on i don't know what the fuck idiots are talking about with memes and shit oh it's like he's just like me i don't know what that's that's what a for real for real means it's a for 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 so uh phil has arrived so let's uh join him on the react style channel and let me update the chat so we can have a very fun time right here on level one again and he is quiet. Because it was working on the other channel. So I have no clue why I wouldn't be working here. 
I'm definitely logged in properly. And let me test another animation, actually. What if I go to... And the animations don't work. Super Chat. I try to test the Super Chat. Okay, does it work? Doesn't nope. seem like it is. For some reason, it's not working at all. I don't know why. I haven't changed any settings. <laughs> I changed <laughs> no settings whatsoever. Let's see what's going on in this chat. Zero. Oh, we got a lot of people chilling and having fun. <clears throat> is Derek there? Yeah. He's not yet, but so, he will arrive. Why not have any pop-ups for this stream? I don't know why. Um, definitely, they should be working, and they're not. And I don't know if it's just the site's not working. What's weird is they were totally working on DSP Gaming. So, in fact, you know what? Let's test something. Let me get rid of the React pop-ups. And let me actually just go back to the old pop-ups for the other channel. So, shout out to... Uh, uh, hold on. I'm just going to pull it up on screen. While he's doing this pop-up schizophrenic so this is segment. Uh, we got this shout out to DSP Gout Gout. If you use Twitter, follow him for the latest and greatest updates on uh, how long each segment takes of the podcast. In the podcast today... Had 25 minutes to quote-unquote set up, also known as playing music. A two-minute intro, 11 minutes of schedule, and 63 minutes of a business segment begging shout-outs in the state of JRPGs. And then we wasted 12 minutes doing Q&A and uh, nothing else. Very nice. Super positive. Here. And this is also the podcast where we talked about how valuable his time is. Epic content. Like, what do you not like about I this? Over here, React pop-ups. Okay. So this is this is the DSP gaming, and that's working. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay, Grandpa, so what's happening? The React channel. You need to log in again because it's a different channel. But his stuff with logging in, yeah. pop-ups, and all that stuff is super complicated because he banned, uh, he got himself banned the off of Stream Elements and also Stream Labs, I think. So now he uses one of those platforms, totally I think it's Stream Labs, like just for the pop-ups. Which makes no fucking so it's it's all. just a mess, man. Like, all of his stuff is just a different? mess. For somebody who talks about how much of a businessman he is I constantly, he's running everything he has in the least efficient way possible. And he's completely yeah, closed himself off, off like from off. attempting to learn how to do it in a better way. He's just he's just so resistant that it makes it really funny. It's not working. It's broken. And this if is I one of the things that, that in, makes people uh, make videos about him is that they want to prove to him that they can start off from zero and can learn how to use the you know, OBS or video editor software or Photoshop better than he has oh, in the last working. 15 years. Oh, and now we got... <laughs> ah, Shout out not... to Spoonful of Phil's ass makes the gout go down who gifted 50 DSP React memberships. Epic. And let's see who got them. Do we see some familiar faces? Oh, yes, we do. We got Derek the second of Coomland. That guy. He's a very positive member of uh, DSP Reacts. Well, he is now. Then we have uh, nobody yet that I am familiar with. But shout out to Derek the Second. Working. He's like the Derek the First, but much better. When I try to log in with YouTube, it doesn't work, which is bizarre. Why would it not work? It just loads and never finishes logging in. Epic, and he doesn't even know this happened. Oh, now what is going on? Well, shout out to a spoonful of Phil's ass makes the gout go down for being fucking based. Try again. So it's based on a true story, dude. That. The story of Job from the Bible. Copy. Because bad things happened to him, See? but he kept persevering and uh, staying positive, just like Phil. And eventually, bad things um, kept happening to him, but he kept okay, persevering. Test it. And eventually, he uh, refinanced his house and took his wife on a honeymoon. <laughs> Nothing. Wait, who are we talking uh, about again? 
I guess I give up because I want to start the react show. I guess I don't really care that much about the pop ups. Um, it's that they're not working. I can track contributions and shout them out. Well, they're not even accurate most of the time. Somebody would send him like thirty dollars, and you would get a twenty dollar pop up. Like, why? Why even bother? I have no clue why the pop ups would not be working. They can't have pop -ups. What went wrong? It's not okay. Me. So the first video it's we're so gonna weird. watch is it's when weird. is mature content in video games okay? No problem. From uh, Gaijin Goomba, pop -ups we're about to find work. out and get educated no on the world of gaming here, and mature content. I'm I just don't know how mature do we are we talking here, about. Are we talking Derek's Twitter working. mature, or are we just and talking about else. like just excessive violence? Sweat. And maybe and every OBS once in a while you OBS, get to see a titty. Because OBS is playing one version and not the other. So I guess fuck the pop-ups. Um, <clears throat> right? I don't know what's going on with those, that they're not loading. Um, I guess what we could do, I could still play pop-ups for, uh, like, super, or for, uh, not super chats, but, um, tips. So if any tips come in today, I can do pop-ups. I'll just do them for, through the DSP gaming page, I guess. That's possible. Is it? And uh, I will manually do shout outs for anything else. So if anyone contributes in any way today, I will give you a shout out. I promise you. And speaking of shout outs, I got right. one from I don't know Joe G in his chat. That page. It doesn't, it's not a huge concern. Wow. Um, I'm famous now. So here's how I'll do it. I'll just do it from here. So I'm going to test Fucking this again. Based. So if I do this, let's test. That works. And then let's test this this works let's say someone did a ten dollar super chat can you test the hundred dollar one so i can manually do them that's the one that's truly say, important gaming contributed <laughs> all right i can manually do them right there you go okay are we are we actually past this phase already no can i disabled the gift pop-ups correct but i just legitimately manual, I, just producing content I disabled the gift memberships i didn't disable anything else yeah i don't know i have to look into it later i mean obviously i want to start the show it's not a huge concern i can manually do pop-ups thank you sarah seven months as a member here so shout out to the community i love you all thank you sarah for that okay <clears throat> is everyone ready to get started I'll just manually do it. If anyone does a super chat, if anyone does a tip or anything like that, I'll manually do it between the parts. Because remember, I got to do it between the parts regardless. I don't do it during the live parts. I'll do it between each part here. <clears throat> okay. Fair enough. Okay. Let's get started, everybody. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's indeed get it started, please. Here we go. So I can actually monitor the stream. Here we are. How long have we been actually waiting? How long? Hello, 26 minutes. And welcome to wow. React. And welcome to DSP versus the Internet, episode 49, for the 28th of January, 2024. Um, man, this was a bumpy week, to say the least. <clears throat> Sadly, with all of the nonsensical things happening with trolling and the like, uh, this channel was kind of at risk. I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do the show this week. But I want to say thank you to all of you who... We're attentive and listen to my plan to fix it. Thanks to those who upgraded their memberships to the new submissions tier. <laughs> so that this show would not be ruined. You know, I love watching the clips that you guys submit for me. Oh, and, and we immediately variety, start talking about stuff. the drama. And I'm excited to see what you came up with this week. I don't want this show to end simply because of idiotic trolls. And glad it's not. The show goes on as planned, as normal. No issue. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I hope you guys are too. I thank you all. Yeah, I, I don't think here, if there are going to be some on demand. Remember the way direct the works, troll videos, but there might be some sneak dissing who the that just got approved because channel, it went over his head. Um, we'll be guaranteed to get one clip watched a week, and we're about to watch those right now. Then we go to the standard member submissions, which are thrown into a randomized playlist, and we watch those. I think, by the and, way, at this point, uh, today, specifically, <clears throat> we've wasted exactly, not exactly, but around an hour of setting up, playing music, and just uh, fucking around and meandering. Because I just realized there's supposed to be, like, membership three on hours left on the stream for him to react, and it's the main thing he's doing today. People being able to submit clips and it's actually miserable. So, thank you to those who are ultra members. Thank you to those who are super members who asked questions this week, which we'll get to in part five. And thank you to those who have
have upgraded to the submissions member tier. I appreciate that as well. And hey, those of you who are standard members, thanks for being along for the ride as well. Um, all right, we're going to get started. <clears throat> and uh, see what you guys want me to watch this week. You ready? All right. So this video is interesting because there's been a debate in the gaming communities over the last many years about adult content in video games. And if you see here, oh, wow. Your content in video games okay? This has been an ongoing discussion that some games, I guess, have either been censored or some games go over the top. And the question is, you know, what do you think about that? Let's see what this person has to say, and I'll give you my, my take on it. All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. Gaijin. And Goomba here. And so games distributed new time. We've watched this before, right? We've watched this guy before. Yeah. Aku approached me not that long ago and asked to sponsor a video talking- Oh, I don't care about their sponsor. This is the game. We'll skip that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's All miss right. out on the, the context. This is their ad, right? All right. The argument. He may does have a not safe for work version that allows you to get intimate with your playable characters as you fight alongside them and build their stats. However, this is a completely optional aspect of the game. But, you know, that actually got me thinking about something. Okay. It's almost like clockwork when Japan or really any developer that makes an anime game that includes adult content, it's immediately branded as raunchy, unnecessary, and made for teenage boys to fawn over. <laughs> but, tell me something, guys. Why is it so easy to brand those games as indecent? But then you've got games like God of War, The Witcher, Mass Effect, all of these games have similar adult content in them, like nudity or heavy innuendos. Dog, if you can't tell what the difference is, then I'm concerned about you. Sequels, for better or worse. I know the first thing that the opposition is going to bring up is the argument that Western RPGs have much better character development, depth, and story, which makes adult content appropriate as it's more believable. Where in Eastern RPGs have titillation and adult content because yeah, it's really so funny how this whole video is about having sex with virtual chicks. Personally, and Phil loves that, as you know. Arguments actually hold any water when you start looking at Eastern games from an Eastern perspective. The argument that Eastern RPGs lack character or depth, thus adult content feels cheap and feels like a hollow point because not everyone plays RPGs for the story. I'm dead serious. If you have and he's already bored. This might be a speedrun on how fast he's going to get bored. Because that basically boils down to Final Fantasy these days. <clears throat> I'm talking Japanese RPG arcade games that use stuff like collectible cards, such as Kantai Collection, which I have played, by the way. From a Western standpoint, games like this are bare bones with little player involvement when it comes to actions, decision making, and movement. But from an Eastern standpoint, the two things I've noticed people really like in these kinds of games are twofold. Stat building and manipulation, and the insane levels of artistic prowess these games present. Numerical strategy and- This is so weird. I don't even know anything about this style of game. Do you guys know anything about this? It's like a card game that has stats and stuff. Oh See, wow! Again, Japanese is it arcade, is it a mobile so game? American I can arcade. check it out, I've never dude. Heard of that? So you would go there and get physical cards out of the machine, and then put those into the game, and it does stat building like an RPG, but it's an arcade game. You know, again, I zero experience with that at all. I didn't even know about it. Precision under the icing of stunning visuals is what sells in mainstream Japan. That isn't to say that no game in Japan lacks good story. We've been shown many times before that that isn't the case. But with the booming mobile market, the player preference to stat-driven games, and the cultural history of importance of visual presentation, the Eastern RPG market has eyes for very, very different concepts than the West does. This brings me to my next point, waifus. I know on the Western oh, we side go. of the internet we crack jokes about how baseless and goofy the concept of someone having a waifu is, but something you guys gotta understand is that entire franchises of figures, anime, games, lordy, you name it, have insane levels of popularity in Japan simply because of design and surface level moe characteristics. And? The, but the, I get it, but, but what's your point? Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's good. Just because a million people oh throw money God, at it God, God, dude, keep watching quality. the video. He's going to explain himself. And, and that's why I think a lot of people have an issue discerning between. Just because something is popular doesn't mean that it's worth your time. Yeah, thank you for but the so take, many DSP. people want to jump on a popularity bandwagon that they just consume it. Why is it popular? It, how is it popular? Because it's popular. This is like a chicken and the egg scenario, right? What makes it popular in the first place? Where is the initial appeal? How many people went and saw the Transformers movies? Uh, at least five. <laughs> you know, 
How many people went and saw every Fast and Furious? At least How 10. How many people go and buy Kardashian products? Uh, at least three. Do you think that anything you bought from a Kardashian is quality? Do you think they even had any insight into the product or, you know, or they just slapped their name on a product made yeah, in China? They, they actually do. Kylie Jenner makes a lot of her stuff. She got uh, Kylie Cosmetics going on and I think she is pretty involved in the process. You know, they have nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could go on and on about things that are popular, but are not of any quality. They are meant to be exploitative of a certain audience that is easily gullible or easily led astray to think that something is good that's not. Oh, so it's just like your stuff, except you're just not popular. And it's designed that way. We have entire things in culture, human culture today, that are 100% meant to be exploitative of the human populace for money. And I think the, the argument against the waifus and all of that is that it's exploitative of people that are looking for a certain kind of content because they don't have that actual kind of stuff in their real lives. Let's continue and see what he has to say. He's literally saying, oh, well, don't you understand? Even though you say it's bad, it's super popular in Japan. That doesn't mean it's good. Bro, you just missed the entire point of everything. What a fucking baby brain. The, what a basic it mean, it's human. It's popular. It doesn't mean it's a thing. A it, sales don't number doesn't mean shit. At this point. So let's see if he, what is going on, what he's to say here. Frame arm girls, kimono friends, and the above mentioned Kantai collection. The story in these games and shows aren't exactly all that deep. In fact, most of the time, they're pretty quirky and almost juvenile. But nonetheless, tons, and I mean tons of people, have grown serious personal interest in these characters. Oh, based Shut your trap, Phil, and play the vid. That's what I'm what talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's no universal definition of what a character is required to have in order for the player to feel a deep connection to them. <laughs> it's why I kind of shake my head and laugh when people say that having I don't know, but big titties definitely help. Like Liara from Mass Effect is fine and acceptable, but physical romantic content in a JRPG or any Eastern game is inappropriate because the characters aren't, quote, deep enough. No, I... Here's... Okay. So that basically is a statement that it, it, it's almost like prejudicial. <clears throat> so because there's a Japanese game that has an anime style character in it, right? That's meant to be exploitative of the gamer in a way, that's not good. But if you have a Western based game that has this kind of character, that's okay because it's more in depth. I don't know if I agree with that either, you know? So maybe in, on this case, I think that that might be a statement that is kind of true that it's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you spend 40 hours building the relationship to get to the point where it's romantic or if it's an hour of pay playing and then all of a sudden it all happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still the same. Dude, are we even watching the same video, dog? I don't think one's better than the other, right? <clears throat> anyway. It's honestly a matter of multinational opinion and taste. But even the argument... No, it's not multinational opinion and taste. It's popularity. Oh my fucking god. There's a difference. See, again, he's mis he's mis miscategorizing things, right? Just because it's popular doesn't mean oh, it's look. good. DSP should make a makeup line like Jenna and call it Big Big Face with Lipstick Lipstick. Oh, yeah, the it's uh, named based on his wife, right? It, it just means that it's popular for a reason. I'm sure In she's going to love the it. The reason why this shit is so popular is because they have a cultural difference between... America, where I live, the United States, and Japan, and Japan. But that's what the guy just said. Japan, they're very work centric. They're very antisocial. They're very different. The By the way, his uh, entire vision of Japan is based on Yakuza games. Just so you know, I'm not saying he's wrong because he is correct in the things that he just said. The populace of Japan is incredibly different from the populace of North America. Their their whole culture is different. So to them, to spend time and money on a game with virtual girls and relationships is normalized because a lot of them don't have time in their lives for the real relationship. They're having a big problem in Japan with having people have real family units and, and, and having a kids and stuff. A lot, oh, I don't have time for that, right? Why do you think they have a whole normalized culture of go to a, a, a cafe and pay a person to have a conversation with you and flirt with you? even though you know that's not ever going to turn into something romantic or real, but you pay for it anyway. Because their culture is different. That doesn't mean it's good. It just means it's popular. It's no, it means it's different. You fucking moron. Is it even good for humanity as a whole? I would argue no. 
it would be better for those people to see. Oh my god, we are already fucking. Oh my god, this has reached critical mass and stupidity on the very first video. Meaningful relationships in their lives and have a work life balance where they can actually have a family rather than to dump a bunch of money into a waifu game and then say, well, I'm too busy to have a real woman in my life or a real man in my life. Because what do they, what do they call it? husbando? Is that the other, the, the male equivalent is husbando and then female face. This is why you stay, even with a tummy ache. A narcissistic Asperger's gout and crusted man child giving marketing and relationship advice while selling king of hate shirts and being married to a robust and note pregnant humpback flowers option 3 please fill. <laughs> I like how you figured out how to get things past the filter. Who or whatever. Uh, except so. uh yeah, except fucking that didn't work. That that was flowers. So I feel like so almost there, dude. That's just not healthy for humanity. It doesn't matter if it's pop. Almost there, but I got gotcha. you. It's just, it's what they do over there because their culture is different. But that doesn't mean their culture is better. It doesn't even mean their culture is okay. But that's what the guy said in the video. You know. And then he paused them and it says, "Well, actually, no. It's because it's popular." And then he repeated what the guy said in the video. You no, know? how can you tell me that a virtual thing is better than something that's real? I just don't understand that, you know? And again, why are these games popular? Because they're predatory. Because they know that the, the, the culture is different over there. They know that the people are so heavy into work, no, no real time for real life. So then this is their solution. This is not a solution. This is a way for you to prey upon that populace and to get filthy rich off of sad people who don't have time for real human connections. It's fucked up in my opinion. And he's like, oh, well, you just don't understand. No, I, I do understand. I just don't agree with it. <laughs> okay? That character development in Eastern games is shallow makes me laugh. Do you know how many role-playing games exist specifically to deeply develop relationships between the player and the NPCs? And why? But why? And why is that okay? It's a fucking video game. You okay. should be getting a deep relationship with a video game character. Bro, you got a deep relationship with Hulk Hogan uh, PNGs. So maybe you're not the right guy to talk. Have it with a real person. Just my attempt to get past the fucking filter. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you did. A different. I, I guess there you are a did. Bunch of dating sims that have. I'm gonna let you go on this one. Can quickly get to the action, as it were. But there are tons. But next time, I'm sending you a spoon. In Japan, that are all about fleshing out characters the player wants to build relationships with, and the development of that relationship. Like that's the entire game. So, I have a hard time believing that just because something looks anime and has adult content, it's automatically cheap. Finally, we need to discuss the issue of lowest common denominator when it comes to these games. Because this is the harshest and most unfair judgment of all. When it comes to not only gaming, but pretty much any form of media in the West- He has no concept of personal value. Yes, um, yeah, he's liking Especially a lot of concepts, States. man. Public but apparently, apparently Hulk Hogan has a lot of personal value to him. Acknowledgement of sexuality of any kind is shamed immediately. I mean, geez, I'm running a massive risk right now just bringing up the concept of mature content and media. I'd actually be surprised if this What's is gonna happen. Are you gonna get assassinated? Ad friendly. Oh no, you're just gonna get demonetized. Okay, so I guess it's not a massive risk. It would be a massive risk if the SWAT team burst through your doors. The only reason getting demonetized not really a massive risk. We felt like we could even do this in the first place is because it's sponsored. Now tell me it isn't. I guess because that was the game. That was actually smart. He partnered. He he wanted to talk about the topic, and he was able to partner it in with a sponsorship. So if he gets demonetized. He still made... That was actually smart. I'll give this guy p smart points on that. He did a, a smart thing there. That was a good one. True. In any <clears throat> sort of public forum, any form of discussion on that level is seen automatically <clears throat> as taboo, inappropriate, and apparently completely <clears throat> not ad-friendly. But when it comes to violence, blood, and gore, perfectly acceptable. That, this I will absolutely agree with, for sure. Why is it that extreme gore, right is totally okay in society but but you know, in video games you know every time that you get to the sexual side of things that's bad it's either one way or the other you know what i'm saying or you find the medium but why is it that the that the the gore is allowed there's so many shows on tv right now with people being beheaded shot murdered okay. cut apart they also have sex in those shows remember game of thrones right and they're not even like considered taboo that's just fine yeah. But then when it gets to anything that comes to sexuals, oh my god, 
18 plus super adult. That is a weird thing. No, that's just not true. That's just not true, especially in this example. The mature rated TV shows usually have both sex and violence. I would say in, in, in our culture, I don't understand it. That does, that's a head scratcher for me. That one is allowed and the other isn't. I think that they're both, it's either both or neither. Not one is okay, the other isn't. They're both considered mature for adults. So well, I don't get that. It's seen as something mature, but not inappropriate in particular circumstances. Other places like Japan, on the other hand, almost uniformly censors extreme violence like graphic dismemberment, disemboweling, and intense gore. Even in some of the country's most violent scenes of popular games and shows, the graphic nature of intense violence is either inferred or artistically censored. Honestly, if you look at it from their perspective, it wouldn't be too hard to believe that we are the shallow ones taking such pronounced joy in death and violence. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. Neither side really has any room to judge the other because it's all about cultural perception. No matter how biologically similar we are as humans, our beliefs, morals, and culture will always define our perceptions differently. But that doesn't mean we as a species are doomed to prejudices. If we collectively could stop, listen, and think about these things from the opposite perspective, <laughs> I think this would be a far smaller issue. We don't necessarily have to agree on everything, However, I think we would be far better off understanding both sides of the argument in order to find resolution. But thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, I, wow. I, I listen. <laughs> we actually watched a lot of this video, and the whole point of the video basically comes down to cultural differences. <clears throat> I, I've said this many times, too. If someone likes that kind of content, then more power to them. But I will say this, right? If you partake in this kind of mature gaming content, and that is the extent of of that in your life meaning you don't seek out a meaningful relationship with another human because you're literally spending all your time and money dumping it into that that is sad that you know you have also you're looking down on them have ample opportunity to have a real life situation but you just explain how people in japan work so hard and spend so much time focusing on that and they're so stressed that they can't afford to have a meaningful relationship you literally just explained that 10 minutes ago, and now you're looking down on him. There's more than enough people on this planet that there's someone for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And if you just actively choose that over the real, that's sad. I'm not going to sit here and judge anyone. <laughs> what? What? He just said, if you act like this, that's sad. And I'm, I'm looking down on you, but I'm not going to sit here and judge you, dude. Do whatever you want. But I think it's sad. And I think you're lesser for that. And say, oh, shame on you for liking your waifus and husbandos. But at the same time, at some point in your life, you would think... This dude's brain is completely fucking gone. You're going to get old enough. You're going to mature up and say it's time for the real thing. Right? But at the same time, too, people who revel in the violent shit, too, I think is fucked up. Like, there's some people who are so into, like, gore and horror and stuff, and I don't understand that either. Listen, I like a good slasher flick, right? But I'm not going to sit there. My whole hobby existence is to be super absorbed in gore and horror and dismemberment and, and demons and monsters and fucked up. Of satanic. course, we got to jump to the extremes. You can't be, be casually enjoying the gore in the slasher movies and the horror movies. It has to be consuming your life. Like shit. Some people are like that, too. It's like... If anything, life, it's there's got to be this happy medium, right? The balance in life, moderation. And I think the problem isn't that this exists. The problem is that it becomes so predominant in certain cultures. In, in Japanese culture, this kind of mature content gaming is so predominant. But then it's at the expense of real-life relationships, and that's the sad part of it. You know what I mean? So... <clears throat> but why is it sad when you just admitted it's their culture and you're not a part of it, so you don't understand it? You know, I, and he, listen, the other thing you always, I need to say this, people should respect other people's opinions on it, all right? I don't necessarily agree with this guy, but I'm also not going to hate on him. I'm not going to call him a loser. I'm not going to be- Bro, how do you, how did you not necessarily agree? You just have the exact same opinion that he did in the video. He says it, the whole point about this is cultural differences, and that was literally your opinion as well. Jerk about it, right? If someone's into it, fine. If you choose not to be into it, that's also fine. Everyone should have the ability to make the decision for themselves. What irks me is that people make judgments on people based on this stuff. 
So don't think this guy's a loser. At the same time, don't get on my case because when I'm playing a video game, I don't feel like partaking in that kind of content. Listen, that un- makes me uncomfortable that I'm playing Why? a video game and there's a romance option. Like I don't want to do a fucking romantic thing in front of a live audience. Okay, the difference is between just I don't feel like doing this. I'm not interested in dating somebody in a video game. That's cool. But what he does is having an actual extreme reaction to it that makes you question where that reaction is coming from. That's weird. That would be like that is weird. Like watching a movie, a rated R sexual movie with family members in the room. No, it's nothing like that. Cuz uh the those romance options in video games are nowhere near as graphic as rated R sexual movies. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to have an audience for that. If you choose to do that stuff privately, that's fine. But understand people's choices and reasons for for not partaking in content. You know what I'm saying? So don't judge people on it either. Maybe maybe that's one of the problems. Maybe the difference is if you choose... But he can't even moderate his JPEG collection. You know what? That, That is true. And what I have to say, I'm not judging. But if you're addicted to Candy Crush and sweaty men and it's ruining your life, that's kind of sad, man, and it's kind of weird. But I'm not judging. It's, it's probably a cultural difference, because I'm not Italian. Maybe Italians have a thing with big, sweaty men that are all oiled up and naked. In this content, and you do it privately, who gives a shit? But what about people who make it all about, oh my god, look, I got fucking posters of it all over, I wear clothes with, with the boobs hanging out and shit, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the anime character, on my shirt, and it's like, what? Why is your whole life, why is your fucking anime avatar on everything you do? Like, you realize- Why not? Maybe they just like how it looks like. Realize that's not who you are, right? You're not an anime. You're a real person. Time to wake up. <laughs> it gets to the point of obsession, right? Oh my Sometimes god, does people, it? So, they think they're like virtual animated characters. No, you're not. This dude is legitimately fucking insane. You're not. That's not who- I think he's lost every ounce of humanity that he used to have, and he replaced it with uh, alcoholism. You are. You're a real human on planet Earth. You don't live in anime land. But some people are crazy. They think they do. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's continue. Let's see what the next video is. Siri, what is the temperature? It's minus 47 degrees outside. Oh, nice. Air temperature in Antarctica is negative 14.8 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius. Here, it is negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 47 so degrees So this is the guy that we saw at the highest elevation, correct? Is it not the same guy? So now he went to the coldest place? Did we not already see this? This place, but now he's going to it? I think we saw this this town in, um, yeah, in Siberia. Did we not see this? It's the frozen town. The, the to boiling water is about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. As you see, it instantly turns into ice crystals. The lowest air temperature ever measured in this region is negative 96.16 degrees Fahrenheit. It is as if it belongs to another planet. Yeah, look. A banana left outside can turn into a hammer in minutes. Uh-oh. So you can so actually kill somebody with a banana, dude. Here. You because can squeeze it to death. To their skin. Right. And if they wanted to take off their glasses, their flesh might be turned out. This is a piece of meat that looks very much like human flesh. Let's just put it in contact with metal. Now imagine that's your balls. Every time I turn on a DSP stream, he's always giving the worst <laughs> take ever on anything you can possibly think of. Every time. But Astounding. it is... It is somehow very charming, isn't it? As you can see, these are natural gas It is very charming. And they because, uh, Rodrigo, thanks for stopping by, dude. It's frozen with ice. There is actually a 100-foot thick mass of ice under the city. Look, this river Shit. is completely frozen. <laughs> dude, you know what would be great? If he just says, why don't they move out of there? During Why don't they just go live somewhere else? What a bunch of fucking idiots. The Soviet era, people who... Because he already did that before. ...contradicted Stalin's ideas were exiled to Sahara Republic region. They were politicians, businessmen, etc. As a matter of fact, some of these people who live in Yakutsk right now are their grandchildren. So this place used to be a land of exile. Today, there is a city life going on. But we could call this life an ice hell. Yeah. It pushes the limits of human Completely nature. Frozen. No matter how much we bundle up, nothing is enough to keep our bodies warm. 
If you have a car here, you have a big problem. Winter lasts for six to seven months here. And in that time, you can never drive your car. If you insist on driving it, you can never stop your vehicle's engine. For example, the car with a running engine you can see here is empty. There is nobody inside. There are hundreds of cars like this. The reason why the engine is running, if it stops, it can be completely covered with ice and the engine oil will freeze. As you can see, the owner of this vehicle must have decided not to run his or her car for a while just after 20 minutes of the engine being off. It is common to give up hope. Another frozen car here waiting to be yeah, this wild. next summer. This car is running, right? Let's see if there is anybody inside. Yeah, nobody. Can you imagine? So I guess the question is, how do they do that? Because number one, wouldn't they run out of gas? Moderation. If only cart applied that with food, applied that with food. Phil would rather romance cart IRL. They play find the coin slot before bed. Yeah, well, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that that last one, the coin slot, dude. Come on. Find the coin would slot. You, is this like, like a, in real, like, machine? in real life gotcha machine? Garage, I wonder what you get. Right? So you could I don't have, have any coins have though. Doors. Maybe next time. And how the hell would you not run out of gas? <laughs> it's running. You know what I mean? That's insane. What a huge base of energy this actually is. Fortunately, Russia is a country that is quite rich in oil and natural gas resources. Yeah, there we go. Even we got your answer. Guest whales have anime avatars. You know what? That's absolutely correct. And he kind of dissed them. Some freezes. That and he said they're sad. I wonder what they feel about this. Hold it. There are special covers for protection. It's a very Sometimes good point. Big up, Mario Faker. Too. People who can afford it keep their vehicles in a heated garage. Ah, it's a special garage. Cool. There is a constant layer of exhaust smoke over the city. Range of visibility is often below 200 feet. You can't see the shit. Smoke. The houses here God damn. have completely different architecture. The reason why the buildings are built on pillars is that the ground is covered with ice and there is a possibility of ice shift. Old houses start to lean over after a decade or Crazy. so because the amount of ice either increases or decreases. It feels like pins and needles. The worst thing that could happen <clears throat> is to get frostbite. Considering a refrigerator operates at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, a freezer operates at about negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the temperature here is negative 58 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit, everywhere you can see here could function as a very high-tech freezer. That's why some people are able to store their fruits or their meat just by hanging them outside oh, wow. their windows. Can I make a sled out of this? Any reaction to this, Mr. Burnell? Always look like that too. It's always endless, for endless just a minute for frozen filming. winter. No, never ends. Terribly. Yes, my that is correct. Are frozen too. I'm trying to break the ice. Move, move. Dude, this is you just like in Connecticut. For more than 15 Except, minutes, you um, would experience yeah, problems. just like it. And difficulty in breathing. We are all prisoners in the, the ride. Yep, we are all prisoners in the Snortex, man. That's what it is. That starts with the needle. We just don't want to leave. Because the outside world is much scarier than the prison. Oh, God. And we kind of like some of the inmates. They're kind of fun. And then, it could result in death. But the prisoners run the prison. That's she the fun thing about it. For just five minutes to film me, her fingertips instantly turned white. Our microphone is giving a red warning. It is not working properly. The camera is also not working as it should. <laughs> it's covered. It was about 10% a couple of minutes ago. And then it suddenly died, whereas it was actually full. What you see behind me yep. is the same This happens in really cold weather here too. Under my shoes is about 100 foot. And this ice mass <clears> under <throat> the city does not melt even in the summer. So, how do people bury the dead? They gather pieces of coal and burn them for two to three days. Once the coal is burnt, the blocks of ice fall and it can be easily removed using shovels. Finally, the area can be excavated to a depth of 6 to 7 feet. The body of a person who died 100 or 200 years ago can be found very robust even today. Oh, it's very robust. That's a very positive finding, it's a long dude. Video. It's fascinating though, right? It really is. It's like a different world. You're, like, you're living on fucking the different planet. It's wild, again, and we've talked about this over the last year that we've done this show. It's wild the places that people live. 
I just don't know why they do. Like, I don't get it. Why would anyone choose to dude, live there? Dude, and I could get like it's you, happening. People are already. I there. called it. Generationally, you're stuck there. But why would you choose to live there? <laughs> With all the hard shit, <clears throat> right, and everything. Just like the highest elevation city that we saw a few weeks ago, because they're looking for gold, right? Oh, the hope that I'm gonna strike it rich and get gold, but in reality, it's all a big scam. It's fucked up. You know, it is. Imagine being born there and being stuck there for the rest of your life. You have no means to leave. Be like, oh my god, seriously? Ugh. All right. Yeah, I think man. This, is a good place. this should just all move to Renton and uh, do DoorDash deliveries so DSP can make fun of their accents. That's exactly what they should do. To split the part, thank you guys for watching. DSP versus the internet. We're Dude, we're already splitting the part. He just watched like two videos. And now he's going to beg in between because he got no contributions. Uh, the or did he? For some odd reason, it's just did not Did he, brother? So I could do this. Yeah, see, that one doesn't work. But if I do the DSP gaming... Well, this is going to be epic. You're going to see an animation about five minutes from now. Just watch. Just watch, dude. It's going to happen. It's going to happen anytime. This is going to be a huge animation. It's be so big. Look at this! Whoa! This is DSP gaming, though. I don't yeah! Know. So, Sarah, thank you for a $5 super chat. <clears throat> And says, do you hate my anime profile picture? I don't hate your anime profile picture. I just want you to understand you're not an anime character. You know that, right? Like some yeah, people... It's almost like it's a profile picture on the internet. Do you have your own photo on this channel? I don't think you do. I don't think you do on the other channel as well. Get so immersed in that culture. They can't discern between the fact that you're a real human on Earth with a real existence in life. You're not some fairy tale person in an animated world with a bunch of big boobed women... You know, it doesn't exist. Yeah, you don't know any people that are like that. You're just assuming the grandstand on them. Thank you, Phil. You know that, right? doesn't matter how much money you spend on it or whatever. And again, if you do, that's fine. But understand, that's not really you. If you do, that's fine. But I feel bad for you and I pity you. And I feel less of you. That's kind of what I was getting at. <laughs> that's kind of what I was getting at with that whole discussion. As I do feel like there's an entire culture of people where they think that that's real. It's not. I wonder real. if I if I put my profile picture as Dark Side Phil, d does that mean I think I'm Dark Side Phil? That's fantasy. Is that impersonation? You know, I think maybe people are just so absorbed in fantasy they can't discern between fantasy and reality anymore, right? In a and nice that's not good. fantasy that's not snort. Healthy. DSP it's and ignorance name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Uh, DSP and Gotcha Gaming. There you go. Ah. Okay. That's definitely mm. more ironic. Okay. Uh, more iconic. All right. <clears throat> Shall we continue with part two? Thank you. By the way, I'll just say this. Guys, we're thinking of tipping today. Yep. It would make sense to hit the, the tips goal early so we can vote and have a hat and everything on the stream early <laughs> rather than wait till last minute. So if anyone was thinking of tipping to contribute today to hit the $100 goal, that would be great to do it in this part so that way we could have a, over two hours of the hat to go for the rest of the show. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just saying it just logically makes sense to do it up front, okay? All right. Do I have the same opinion for furries? Again, I don't care if you're a furry or not. Go for it. But understand that's not really you. Understand you're not actually a wolf. You're just a little twink in a diaper. <clears throat> you know, there's a difference between it's my hobby, it's fantasy versus, you know, conflicting that with, the, with reality, right? You're not really a furry creature. You know that, right? It's okay to pretend to have fun, but <laughs> just know the difference. It's called moderation, right? <clears throat> okay, are we ready to continue? Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 49. Let's jump right into part two more Ultra Member submission. Hello? Oh, yeah, now it works. Another okay, so last Cowboy week, I Bebop this gig with the J Music song? Ensemble, which is this band that plays anime and J-pop and video game music at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Huh. It's another group We're playing, playing here the Cowboy as part Bebop. Of Sakura Matsuri, which is the annual Cherry Blossom Festival here in uh, Brooklyn. Now, the band is fronted by fellow Manhattan School of Music alumni Patrick Bartley, who is a pretty amazing jazz saxophone player. He plays with Wynton Marsalis, he's played with the Chainsmokers, he's played 
on Colbert. Uh, somebody new joining the band. Say hi to Patrick, everybody. The Japanese yeah, this is definitely going to get claimed really immediately. I mean, I guess like most of us um, in America, I came Do to Do you Japan think when Kat wants romance from Phil, it becomes difficult for him to find her no. cellulite? No, no, like finding the no. On Killer Whale. No, I don't think that. I try not to think of it as much as humanly possible. I also don't think anybody uh, in that household wants romance, music. including Jasper Kitty. Through video games. I would play Sonic the Hedgehog. I would play um, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, all the time again. Okay, I'm just gonna skip this because I got some skip juice. I'm not watching this, man. Bunch of Home Depot boxes. How? If I can have the choice whether or not to watch this, I choose not to watch this. And I, I respect those guys for jamming out, but uh, Dark Side Phil has nothing to add to this. And I'm here for him, for the quality content he provides that adds meaning to my life. ...about Japanese language. I know nothing about Japanese language, so... <laughs> yeah, well, but you know all about the culture, don't you, Philip? Mr. Filler. I'm just gonna go live. And we're still gonna be on that video. We gotta get to this video. Oh, oh no, we skipped it. Thunderstorm, come forth to me. Almighty Thunder. Yo, it's Cobra! Inside. Hey, come that's forth. what's up! This stream has immediately become factually based. Fucking based. Got the King Cobra playing with thunder and lightning. Because I can. I love conjuring thunderstorms. Oh, hey, it's homeboy Scotty. What up, man? What'd it do? Friendship is about sharing what you got, dude. You know, like, it's not really about that. It's about, like, sharing what you got, dude. It's a circle, dude. You, you share with me, I share with you. Let's see how it do. Okay, you, you people are weird, man. <clears throat> like, I get it. I get that this guy is, you know, a, a weird guy on the internet. And people like to watch him for fascinating reasons or whatever. Why would someone make an animation of him? I <laughs> Because he is fun? And why? Oh, my God, man. He hates people having fun. He hates it, especially when, it, when, when he feels left out and doesn't understand it, which is 99.9% .9 of the time. Like, don't you- Why do you hate people having fun so much? Do you have something better to do than make an animation of this guy? Seriously. It is oh, short. This guy is such a fucking negative Nancy man. Look at Get him out of here. <laughs> send him to a send him send him to Yakutsk, man. Send him to that that snowy town we first saw. I want him to freeze in like my, minus uh, fifty thousand uh, Celsius. Get him out of here. So Make him a frosty. It does. Tactical. Make him a popsicle. She's like, that goth dude smells good. Smells good, man. Wow. Cobra's got a drink. What the combo. fuck is Mr. Peanut? Oh, hey, Sean. What's up? Better not keep drinking, boy. Fuck you, Sean. I don't need alcohol. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. I'm. I'm putting an end to the the cat vagina uh, messages. You know what? You can get blocked. No, boy. Not happening. Overall, not bad. Not in this town, little boy. And we got an Apple video. Anyway, very interactive. I don't know if we're gonna be able to watch this. It's only nine days old. It's an official Apple video. And it's supposed to be Apple Vision Pro, so I guess it's supposed to explain like a new VR AR thing that Apple is coming out with or has come out with. Now, I'm not into this stuff. I don't pay attention to the technology when it comes to, as you know, I had PSVR. I didn't really like it after a few months. I thought that it was a complete waste of time. And I never really got back into it. So I haven't been up on the technology of any of this stuff. I think the reason that someone submitted this for me to watch is because we had talked about it recently and I said, oh, I don't know about the changes to the technology and what's happened in like the last seven years that this has been out. <clears throat> so I guess we'll see. Let's skip the intro and let's just go right into it. I don't care. Yeah, let's see what this is. Manager. Let's see what it can do. Look at this. So this is the home view of Vision Pro. The home view is where you access all your apps and experiences. Anytime you want to get back there, just simply reach up with your right hand yeah, and press the digital grill. This one? Exactly. Yeah, but you have to fucking have the headset. You navigate using your eyes, hands, and voice. You simply look at something, 
and tap your fingers together to select. Oh. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, I'm seeing the photos right now. It's like wow, right there. I'm seeing the <laughs> photos. It's, it's like it's like the photos are right here in front of my eyes because they are because I put this headset on. Wow. <laughs> and obviously, I can't believe it. They're not on a screen. They're not on my phone. Dude, oh my god. My eyes. On a headset I'm wearing on my head. That's how remarkable. You, how can you watch this guy unironically and get enjoyment out of it? He hates everything. He hates more things than I do. And I'm an actual part-time hater. That's my gimmick. That's what I do. I, I'm unapologetically a hater. And this dude hates stuff more than I do. Come on, stop jacking my style. I've never... Wow. Stop it. <laughs> Oh my god. Thing right here in front of us. <clears throat> Let's start by selecting one photo. You'll notice that the room dims around the picture. Oh yeah. To make the photo bigger, simply look at the corner and pinch and drag. Wow, this is amazing. Why is it amazing? It's, it's the same expect. photo. Look where you want to zoom. What? <laughs> This is amazing. Oh it's like God. you can make the photo bigger. But that's the thing, dude. This is technical technological progress. And this is what kind of has to happen for us to keep inventing new and more interesting stuff. And it, it's step by step. You don't get to wake up one day and you get a, a telephone invented. And on the next day, you get a spaceship that has inter, interstellar travel capabilities. It's all step by step. And this dude hates on everything. <laughs> what is it? Dude's talking butterfly while wearing neck phones. You know what? Very good point. The butter, uh, the, the butterfly, uh, the neck phones is such a fucking gimmick, man. What do you think about this? Together, such a gimmick. Pull both hands apart. What? And you don't have to have your hands up in the air. They can rest comfortably down in your lap. Okay. Oh, yeah. Looking to zoom back. How can you tell me this is not impressive? That the dude is just sitting there and doing motion, uh, motions and interacting with the headset. Of course it's fucking impressive. I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not a fan of this, but I acknowledge the hard work that made this possible. That's okay, the point. There you go. Oh, look, That's not that. crazy. I need to see chance to zoom out. So how do I move it around? It's easy. Just look at the window bar beneath the app. Do you see it? Uh-huh. Pinch your fingers together and you can push it out. Pull it in. <laughs> Move it side to side. Oh my god! So crazy. All right, can we get to something else? Because this is not impressive at all. Panoramas. It's not impressive at <clears throat> all. Choose one and expand the image in the upper right hand corner. Come so it's on. A panoramic view, right? Yeah, hey, this is pretty cool. Panoramic view cameras, they do exist. For the first time, you can <clears throat> see panoramas. Panoramic view cameras, by the way. Something that you can do on pretty much any current generation mobile phone. Yes, you need a special camera to do it. At life size. It's wrapping around me. So you can just take this panorama with your phone. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. put it on here. Any and panorama be able to be in it. you've ever taken on your iPhone, you can experience like this. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Explore. In all the years I've had an iPhone, not once did I ever take a panorama. <laughs> now, it's not life-changing, but it's a step in that direction. I didn't even know it was on there. I didn't Who cares? Of course he doesn't. Do he just uses the phone for Hogan's in the weekly phone call with mommy. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> TV and movies. <clears throat> all right. Want to go to the movies? Sure. Open the TV app. Oh, by the way, this this thing with watching movies on your phone through like VR, you can do that on the Google Cardboard, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Get that stupid thing off your fucking head and get in your car and drive to the goddamn movies like a regular person. Stop. Are, are, do you do that, Phil? Do you do that? Is that how you watch movies? When was the last time you went to the cinema, Mister Regular Person? Stop fucking wearing that dumb thing. Eat with your voice. <laughs> okay. Siri, open Apple TV. <clears throat> Cool. To scroll, you pinch your fingers together and you pull it in the direction that you want the content to go. It's almost like pulling on a piece of invisible string. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to scale up the screen so it really takes over your space. Like this? What? It's so big. I feel so like all it's doing is it's filling your field of view. It essentially becomes a virtual IMAX screen. 
Wow. <clears throat> yes. In your face. I, you know, again, I experienced that with the PSVR. Is that it? Did it felt like you were just immersed around everywhere you were looking was a screen, right? So I get that, but this what? this gimmick wears out about you know a few weeks in after you've you've used a device like this for a while, the gimmick kind of wears out and it's not that interesting anymore. You know, I actually feel like for the newcomer, the first when I got first got my PSVR, admittedly, it, I was like blown away. For like the first week, I couldn't get enough of it. Every day, I was like, "We're doing more VR. We're gonna do this horror game. Then we're gonna do a virtual job game. Then we're gonna be Batman, right?" And everything was in my face, and it was really neat in that regard. But yes, but you're not doing that for your own personal entertainment and enjoyment. You're doing it for your business. So clearly, of course, you're gonna get tired of it when you kind of have to do it. You're not doing it for fun. But <clears throat> eventually, you just get to a point where the gimmick wears out. And when the gimmick wears out, it's just not that big of a deal anymore, you know? Yeah, because you're used to it. No. It doesn't wear out. You just get used to it. Just like uh, getting a PS5 using the the dual sense with uh, the haptic feedback, adaptive triggers. At some point, you just kind of get used to it. Workspace. So you're not as impressed as you were day one. Spatial audio is actually coming from the audio pods. They sit just outside your ears. They deliver that sound, which is that rich spatial audio. Next. Let's scale up Safari so it's nice and big right in front of you. Okay. There it is. So how do you feel about your workspace? I mean, it's huge. So essentially, okay, it, turn, you... it turns into a bunch of virtual screens as well. I mean, I have two screens over at my PC, and I could do that if I wanted, right? Right now with my dual monitor setup. And they're saying basically you could have almost like infinite monitors around you on the Internet. So you could have... <clears throat> something over here yeah. watching a video here you're reading here's your social media feed all at once yeah that's right. exactly what it is phil all right fine i get that it's uh, it's not amazing but i guess that's neat i don't know how many people need to sit in front of that all day with that headset on to do that and how comfortable is that they can sit there that's kind of the thing once you buy it you can sit there as much as you want and like i said i'm not gonna buy it and i think it's a uh, uh, i don't know it, this this thing is probably uh, incredibly expensive but it's a step in the right direction for future technology and innovation. Because if everybody was like DSP, we would still be driving cars like in the Flintstones. I'm with that on. Are you kidding Plays me? The amps. How does that work? Okay. Yeah, it's $3,500. Of course it is. Of course it is. Apple, baby. Bite the apple and shut up. And uh, make sure to bring a spoon. And follow me. How do you do FaceTime? Someone's gonna give you a quick call. With that on. Hey, Will, how's it going? How does he My look name to is her? Yuri. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hey. So I'm actually calling from a Mac, and I wanted to show you how FaceTime feels like on Apple Vision Pro today. Okay. So let's scale the window so I'm life size, and it's gonna feel like I'm in the room with you. Let me try. Uh oh, Derek is sweating he right now. His champion's addiction so well. Just playing the game doesn't do it anymore for him. He needs to spend my love amounts cat's poozy to feel accomplished. He can't wait three days for a pack or be with the lower people not getting the top cards. Of course, yeah. When he played Supercard, at least he actually played it. Like, he hardcore played it. And it implies he kind of enjoyed it. Uh, the Champions is just, man, I just need that, that hit. I need to get it. I need my fix. I don't want that. I don't want them in the cool. room. My colleague Kristen. That's the whole point of doing FaceTime. Is you and don't yes. want to be. Don't think I didn't mention. Uh, I didn't notice that mention <laughs> right? of uh, the cat's if I pussy. I wanted to be in the room with the person. I know exactly I what you did there. The You're person. on thin ice, buddy. Maybe I'm sending like, you to uh, maybe, you Siberia. Know, there's some noxious. You just got to be having fun. Right? You don't want to have them like life size. That's the whole point. I think they missed the point. It's gonna call you now. So have fun. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Have a good one. So I want to know how did she see him? Cause he's wearing a headset. There's no camera there to film him for the FaceTime. So what does he look like to her? That's what I'm interested in. <clears throat> hey, Will. It's Kristen. Hey. Who the fuck are you? What, why does your FaceTime look different from Yuri? I'm wearing Apple Vision Pro, just like you. Oh, this so this is how it works. What? You can see my facial expressions, my hand gestures, and it's all in real time. Huh. Wow. What? Yeah, do I look the same way? Yeah, your persona is awesome. <laughs> Anyways, I'll let you get back to all Why the can't I see what he looks like? Well, he looks just like her. It's like an AI recreation. It does look pretty creepy, though. I want to see it. 
So that's what you look like? You're basically an it is. It is very, like, uh, Black Mirror level of stuff. But, of course, Black Mirror is kind of based on, on real life and the dangers of technology. Eye face. <clears throat> so her eyes are real. And everything else is AI generated, right? Like a V... Yeah, exactly. Like a robot VTuber face. Like you're like it's fucking Detroit become human android face. Like it's uh, Ranton become <laughs> oh gotcha gamer. See you later. Yo, this is weird All shit. Right, take care. Sometimes you just need a little peace and quiet to get things done. So to do that, what I do is I take this fucking thing off and I just turn everything off around me. I go, and I I'm sitting in silence. Yeah. When was the last time you did that, Phil? This stupid thing. Open environments from the home view. Now choose one. How about? This one. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, rent and become insolvent. That's a really good one. Oh my god, it's heavy this rain. Office. Yo, it's Norman Jaden. It's totally Norman Jaden in heavy rain doing the, the virtual area where he would like have his personal space to do his work, right? Bro, I'm That's gonna throw you through the drywall. Shut the fuck up. Any app. <laughs> so now I can't throw me. him. Of course, I can't lift him, but I can drop kick him. Oh what? no, no! Get it, mate. Take it away, take it away. Scene. Exactly. Breakthrough lets you, you know what? It, this whole like comparing stuff to video games and especially his life reminded me of this song. And uh, Ronnie Radke might hit me for that one, but I'm I'm willing to take a hit. Uh, is is this one? Hold on, this is the one. This is uh, uh, how would Phil say it? Fucking based. There we go. My life is like a video game Trying hard, hard to, to beat, beat the, the stage All while I am still collecting coins. coins Trying hard to save the girl Obstacles I'm jumping Yeah, pretty based if you ask me Stay connected to the people Fucking around you based. Even if you're fully immersed No, I don't want that You can also control the I level of immersion immersed. in Keep an environment Simply by spinning the digital crown The whole yeah. song is much more cringe than this now, I've got something cool to show you. You can well, bring Well, finally. I mean, we've already seven minutes in. I'm waiting for something. And, and now we get that. into the main event. The, the rated R. Rated R stuff. Right <clears throat> into Vision Pro. And it instantly turns your screen into an enormous display. Wait, oh, no, never mind. Go ahead and select connect. No, what are you doing? Whoa. You all, wait, what? No, 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 no. You already have the headset on. Why do you also need the Mac laptop? You already have it. You already have the device. Because it's your... a part of the ecosystem, Philip. You fucking idiot. Hey, the idea is that you don't need another device. Why do you need... <laughs> no, the idea is that you need all the Apple devices so you can have the best experience. That's kind of their whole gimmick. It's uh, the, the big selling point of Apple is just having this super diverse and well-developed ecosystem of technology. <laughs> She's like, so if you have... All you need to do is spend like 10 grand. It, I'm not even asking for that much. Have just ten grand. The Mac, and you have the MacBook and the headset and the phone, and the toothbrush, and the fucking you know you can do it all. Like, wait, no, I bought this. This is why do I need another Apple device? Do you see these fuckers? Uh, what they do, bro? They, 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 this is this is by the way the only feature that requires a different Apple device that they showed throughout this whole time, and now we're getting a rant about it as if that's the whole idea of this whole thing. Seriously, do you see what they do? This is a hundred percent their whole idea. Get you immersed in Apple culture, and now you need to own every piece, everything in your house is Apple. Yes, that's been that's been Apple's selling point for a long, 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 long time, Phil. And it all will interconnect, so that way you need to own like forty thousand dollars of Apple merchandise in your house. That's the that's the trick. That's the marketing gimmick, man. What's the last thing experience is? What the fuck is this? That's kind of like the DSP marketing gimmick where you need to be a member on three channels if you want to get all the benefits. <clears throat> By the way, Apple Excellent Vision's also care. haunted. So when you put it on, you've got a ghost in your head for the rest of your life that never leaves you alone. It's beautiful. I hope you didn't like shitting in peace because Can they're always going to be a 20 minute version you. of this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's keep going. I want to show you some other fun experiences in Apple Vision Pro. Scroll to. Um, I, I think I've seen enough. So Apple Vision Pro. Wait, what was this cat? I think it went over my head because I lost him at at Ghost because I was thinking of a tea joke. I couldn't come up with one, and then he said something about scat. I need a replay. Apple Vision's also care. haunted. So when you put it on, you've got a ghost in your head for the rest of your life that never leaves you alone. It's beautiful. I hope you didn't like shitting in peace because they're always going to be. And there we go. There we go. <laughs> Tease ghost oh, watches you poo poo. 
I want to show you some other fun experiences in Apple Vision Pro. Scrolled. Oh, um, I, I think I've seen enough. So Apple Vision Pro, by the way, I don't know if this is true or not. Someone in chat said this device, listen to this. I'm this listening. This device costs 3,000. 500 United States dollars. <laughs> Philip, how much money have you spent on mobile game, bro? You could have bought every single Apple device that has ever existed. Not every single, you know, every single unit, but every single edition. Dog. Come on. Wow. How it's can you just be yourself? People are like, yeah, and be basically... and have opinions like this. Yeah. At least they actually get something and not just a sweaty man like an, a, you know, a non-Apple version of this, there's a million companies that make it and you can get it for as low as $200. You know, you can get more expensive ones that are better, but Apple is essentially the most expensive one. <clears throat> you know, that's pretty insane. All right, let's continue. Let's do one more video. Before oh yeah, by the way, I think last month he spent around 5,000. That's the estimate on last month because it was, of course, the season of giving. So he was giving to the Hogan, man. He was giving it all. Before we split the part. He was number one at one point. And he then ended up, I think his final ranking was around eighth uh, because he wasn't dedicated enough. Here. Yeah! The videos captivated America. Students leaping for joy. Oh, oh, how is he going to make this toxic? Because this is just people, uh, actually not even, yeah, they are people. This is teenagers finding out that they got accepted to a school they really wanted to go to. And they're super excited and happy. How is this going to be a bad thing? Uh, make your, place your bets, everybody. After learning, they've been accepted to some of the nation's top colleges. <laughs> This video from last year has been viewed more than 8 million times, showing a young man being accepted into Harvard. Yeah, big ups, bro. That's what I'm talking about. They all attended a small prep school in Louisiana, TM Landry, which was praised for sending an astonishing 100% of its graduating students to college. And you got into Harvard, <clears throat> yes. and you got into Stanford. <laughs> Now the New York Times, in an explosive front-page story, says the school isn't what it's been made out to huh. be. Oh, According no! The, Times, the school falsified transcripts. Oh, my God, it made itself negative. It made itself toxic. Oh, he doesn't even need to try on this one. Made up student accomplishments and fostered Shit. a culture of fear as students were choked, yelled at, and berated. <laughs> oh, what if I'm into it, though? Then I, that's the school I'm going to. If I'm going to get choked and, and spit on? But Tarsha Lewis's two children. <clears throat> I'm going the there, school. dude. What do you want to say to the owners of the school? Shame on you. Shame on you for lying, for deceit. Um, a lot of us believed in you. A lot of us trusted you. I trusted you with my children. Everybody the school is owned by Michael and Tracy Landry. The Times quoted Landry as admitting he has hit students and could be rough. He told the Times, I don't do that anymore. The couple also Yeah, I think uh, I think this guy needs a, a, a house visit. We need to swing by to his place and hang out for a little bit and be rough with him. ...school transcripts and college applications. A Cinderella story that might seem too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to comment whatsoever because oh. I have made good good thing this is not a react show where you get to react on stuff. Good thing we can just say no comment and move on. He comments about this in the past about the American school system how broken it is. There's actually a lot of things going on right now legally in the American school system if you guys are not aware. Um when it comes to these top end Ivy League schools they're basically all being exposed now for have been being scams for a very long time that the system was always broken and you know I mean look what just happened was it Harvard who, who what happened the had to step down who was in charge of Harvard because they found out the person's a rampant plagiarist and oh right yeah you know, yeah a lot of their I've seen that were fake <laughs> it's like oh <clears throat> that's interesting but yeah anyway you know I don't really want to get into it you know, we could if we had more data, right? But the whole thing, the whole system of American education is a scam. It's set up to create a system where, number one, these, these colleges make insane amounts of money on the education system that they don't deserve. They're not doing that amount of work. To but, bro, we, this is, oh, my tuition. God. We're not even talking about that. We're talking about this specific school. 
this specific prep school. We're not even talking about the thing that actually concerned you, that you have a personal grudge with. It's insane the amount that they charge. Number two, the entire system is a class-based system where through nepotism or legacies or things like that, the same class of people always gets to go to these schools and then immediately get hired for high-end jobs and immediately get into positions of power at said companies or even become politicians later. It's an actual system based on essentially a, a, a keeping down everyone else. It's fucked up. And now that they're investigating, they're finding out these colleges never had fair ways to get in. A normal person had zero chance to get into an Ivy League school. You either had to know someone, pay a ton of money, or be someone who's like going to be on their sports team to make them a ton of money, and that's it. Like, there's no other way for a normal person to make it and get into an Ivy League school of any fair means, which is really fucked up. It's all now being exposed. Go look right now. You're seeing people are suing these schools. And saying, why is it that if you were a certain race or a certain ethnicity, right, you had almost zero chance to get in unless you were rich and already knew people who went to the school or already had family that went there? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, man. So Nepotism really sucks, especially those people that get their, their dads to get them a job. Those people, like, really suck, man. Nepotism especially hiring people without any skills because one of their parents works in the company shit man i'm so glad that's not you phil anyway we could go on endlessly about this i'm sure there's tons of information about it and tons of stories about it now because it's just in the last year kind of exploded with lawsuits and things being exposed when i was growing up i was told work your ass off in in school and you'll go places and i did you did go places denied. Even though I you went to bankruptcy court, Phil, it all worked out. Was valedictorian had insane amounts of high end, you know, what do they call it? Advanced credit and stuff like that. Because I took high end courses that were supposed to be like college level courses when I was still in, in high school. I had tons of extracurriculars and everything, volunteer work, everything you could have, absolute best of the best, cream of the crop. No high end schools accepted me, none. But some kids from my school did get into Ivy League school for sports. Oh, damn. It. You should have tried for like, sports uh -huh. too, man. So I heard you were lifting exactly. weights back in the day. Right? But anyway, that's what I mean. Like, we could talk about this for a long time, but I feel like I've already talked about it before. So. <clears throat> he didn't make it because he was Italian-American, dude. That's the that's the real fact of the matter. What was my valid, uh, my GPA? I don't remember. It was close it was a to, lot. to a full 4.0. I don't think it was 100%. It was like 12 it was probably like right under, because I had straight A's. My entire high school career was straight A, straight A, straight A. I worked my ass off in high school. I missed out in high school of having a lot of time with friends and doing things that I wanted to do because I was always either working on schoolwork or doing extracurriculars to boost my- I will bet all the spoons in the world that Phil thinks he got left out of an ivy because of some urban styles. In China, they say styles and dalsim styles people. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I guess at this point, he's just making up a reality. Nobody really knows the real story. My resume is- Nobody knows any of that. ...to a high-end school, right? And it, it did nothing. It was a joke, you know? It was an absolute joke. So, anyway, uh, let's uh, split the part here, and then we'll oh, come back to, in, to uh, split part that three part. And, and he's going to be begging big style. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, he doesn't see the tips. Hold on, I got to get this one. We have a few more Ultra Member videos to get through, but then we're going to get to the standard member submission. So I'm excited for that. Thank you all. See you in the next part. That's the thing with this, okay. uh, with his <clears throat> academic history. It's pretty vague. All we know for a fact is that he was, in fact, a valedictorian. And we know he went to a Catholic school. And anything kind of beyond that is, uh, is, uh, is a weird area Split of the unknowns. Here, um, no, no new tips have come in. At least I don't see any. If anyone has tipped and you're wondering why I'm not shouting it no out, no tips. I don't see it. Uh, a couple people had mentioned earlier today that maybe there were tips that weren't showing up. So just to forewarn everyone, if you don't notice I'm not shouting it out, please let me know. Uh, but thank you very much to WJAZ or WJAZ who became an ultra member today. Whoa. Thank you so very much for that. That is awesome. Oh man, what are the chances that it was a Spanish speaking fella? 
and uh, I hope that you will submit some clips for next week's show. Mm, I don't Just know. So knows, the threads to submit clips will be tonight on this channel on the community tab. Not like last week. Last week, everything was thrown into disarray, but we fixed the problem. So the threads will be up tonight, and you could start nominating your stuff for next week. Okay? So I'll do Because random time. unknown people like that don't just become the, the $20 member. That's my logic. I might be wrong. For tonight's late night stream over on DSP Gaming. Cool. Yeah, 4.0 is, I believe, the, the highest grade point average you can have. That means you literally got nothing below perfect. 4.0. I don't remember if I had a 4.0 or not. I, mean, I have no other recollection, but I was the valedictorian of my high school, you know? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, all right, good good stuff. We're ready to continue. Actually, you know what I should do? I should stretch my legs. Oh, shit, I just realized I've been sitting down the whole time. Let me just do a quick break, stretch my legs. Uh-huh. Oh, well, uh, thankfully I get to skip through this. Okay. And he is I back. received a $2 tip. Okay, there we go. It works, guys. He tested Lady it. Lady Charisma. I'm one of the biggest supporters of VR gaming. The Vision Lady Cuck Charisma Pro is not even going to support VR games at launch. It's just Apple, the Apple tax. For 200 bucks, I can get a MetaQuest 2 and do as much on it and, and play a ton of games. There you go. Apple sure. is ridiculous, man. The app, that Apple shit, the, what they charge for devices, and it, it really is a culture thing. You know what I mean? Like, to them... You're one of us. You've joined the Apple family of products and, and culture, and everything in your house needs to be Apple, right? <clears throat> and it's a prestigious thing to have a, your Apple Watch and your Apple phone and your Apple, your Mac laptop that is way overpriced, which I never understood because now everything else is caught up. Like at one point, Macs were known to be like the top of the line products when it came to ease of use and video editing, and now everything else caught up. Like everything else is just as good. It's 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 remarkable to me, all right. It is absolutely remarkable to me that people still buy into Apple after all this time. Because at well, first they were I mean, I, I guess it's three things. Uh, first of all, I would say brand loyalty. Second of all, is the ecosystem. I have to say it's it's pretty good. It's very well developed and very convenient. And third one is that it is a status symbol. If you have an Apple phone or an Apple device. You know, it's a it's a symbol of a certain status. You know, you're a baller officially. We're innovative, but can you even mention a single thing Apple has done that's innovative in the last ten years? Can you think of one thing they've done? I can't. So why are they still? Why do people still dump money into that? I don't understand it. <clears throat> anyway, all right, let's continue. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you, Phil. Oh, man. Sorry about that. No, nah, that, it's all right. Don't worry about it, buddy. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Can all we right, get to watch ready? more videos? Continue. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to DSP versus the Internet episode. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh and we're man. watching people steal again because, um, yeah, somebody just keeps sending those. This stuff all the time. The evidence flusher. Straight to the ATM. I wonder what he's going to do with the evidence. Make sure he has enough money to pump some gasoline. All right. Type in my super secure pin number. One, two, three. I'm going to turn the speed up to this one. To Let's like 1.5. Insert the card one more time. You can't figure out how to use the ATM. My chip. <laughs> okay. Type in my pin code. Super secure. <laughs> one, two, three, four. All right. And do I want to check my balance or withdraw money? Obviously, want to check my balance. Okay, this is boring. What else is going to happen here? Let's get something actually happening thinking about what he wants to do with that candy because obviously he doesn't want to pay for it so he's looking out the window he's got the sprite and the candy in his right hand he's gonna do the old swap a right here put the candy into his left hand you know make it a little easier on him so he's gonna wobble back and forth he's gonna pretend like he's looking at candy just patiently waiting in line you know waiting his turn so he can make his purchase you know he needs some gasoline he's going to pull up his pants a little surprise he didn't do it right there he's thinking about it he doesn't know what he wants to do it he's gonna go look out the window he's gonna step back and now is the time to just slip it into your pocket uh. Ooh, that slippery little <laughs> rattlesnake hopefully it doesn't slip on that wet floor so he's pretending to look at the candy like he might be interested in buying some but we know that's not true because he just slipped some candy into his pocket so Okay. Good evening, cashier. This is Live Security. I hear you. I'm looking for him. So, what is happening here? Cashier, there was a male customer at your side. He was wearing black hoodie. He took one candy from the candy section and then he hid that candy inside his clothes and then he moved to the restroom. Oh, there we go. Uh 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. What you need, Ben? 15? Got you. Hello, I tried to catch him, I tried to find him. Huh? Huh? Oh man, I'm skipping this. This is an executive decision. So the guy gets caught eventually. And what does Phil has to say about it? That it's funny? Wow. Holy shit. And very nice commentary. Skip to the next one, Phil. Because I've already watched him watch plenty of these videos. Then a cop shows up, I guess two cops, and then they catch the guy. And I don't know. Probably not a very happy ending. For him, that is. Pause. So. All right, let's continue. Let us continue. <laughs> this is coming from oh a guy with God. an iPhone. Oh, yeah, but, but it is a very old iPhone. I give him that. He hasn't been upgrading every year or something. It's like an ancient iPhone at this point. Th doesn't he have, like, an iPhone 6? I actually killed him. Damn. I can't believe you guys just reset this shit. <laughs> and Marlon Bay is so amazed that it works, he just ran out of the store. Or ran out of the arcade. He, I, we don't know where he went. Hey, we're going to have to DQ <clears throat> Marlon Pie because he's not here to play his grand finals match. <laughs> what do you guys think? You know what? <laughs> what the what the hell is that? Where the fuck did you get that? Did you rob a three-year-old asshole? <laughs> Yo, he got so hype he drop kicked the three-year-old in the face and stole his tricycle. Yo. Give that shit back to Winrich, asshole! Oh shit. <laughs> Mama Pie just fucking <laughs> He just fucking knocked out a little black kid he and stole his strike. He just kicked Winridge in the head and stole his strike. Yo, he stole his strike. I wonder how he's gonna hate on this video. Yo, that wheel isn't even big. It's not even a big wheel. What the fuck? Kyo. Yo. Kyo. Kyo's new car. Kyo. Yo, he won that for for doing that clutch shit with Akuma. Kyo. Do some strike strike angle dashes. Strike angle dashes. Strike angle dash. Strike angle, yeah. Strike angle dash, go. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this dude is Yo, legit. <laughs> this is oh legit God, driving like a kitty tricycle. Yo, he body coats the stick again. You're fixing that shit. I mean, he can't possibly hate on these guys. They're just like sitting around playing fighting games and having fun. How can he? How can he make fun of them? Oh my God. How can he make this toxic? He just did is the big question. <laughs> Yo. So everyone's like, what's happening? This is either Marvel vs. Capcom 3 or Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This is a tournament. And I guess what happened was someone picked a low-tier character and won with the low-tier character, so they were joking. And then he ran and grabbed this fucking Fisher-Price scooter from somewhere and rolled it on camera and is now doing jokes with it. <clears throat> I don't know where they got that from at a gaming tournament. You tell me. And I already, I'm Marlon Pie. I know him. And uh, I know the guy, the commentator on the right-hand side there, I forget his name. I know all these people because they're old East Coast fighting game players from back in the day. So I know all of them. I used to hang out with them. I used to play against them in tournaments. I held tournaments that they attended, you know? Wow, epic. Uh, here's this video. Here that was, by the way, I think that was his way of trying to get clout in that community by holding tournaments and, and bragging about it because, you know, he's the boss of the tournament. And I don't think it worked out the way he wanted it to work out from 2011 because i think people are just hanging out with him to just get the benefit you know to just uh have somebody drive him around or something because i also know they used to go a bunch of places when they traveled and he used to pay for their meals and stuff so yeah he was just he was practically a useful idiot that's what he was and he never knew it's a 13 he thought they legit yeah. liked him but yeah i used to be uh you know I, I know all these guys in the video basically <clears throat> they're from the new jersey area new york new jersey area in fact, at the bottom of the screen, it says The Break Weekly, October 8th. You can't see it. says October 4th, 2011. Uh, so this might be eight on The Break, which is the arcade in New Dunlin, New Jersey, that I used to go to all the time for tournaments. That's where East Coast Championships took, took place and stuff like that for a very long time. So <clears throat> I think that's what it is, actually. So anyway, I never saw this clip before. I never knew that Marlon Pye grabbed a Fisher Price type trike and drove it onto a camera in the middle of a tournament. I never I was not aware of that. So there you go. Okay. You might get very hungry after and watching this. And food. I'm at one of the biggest airline I'm already hungry. Here. Look at this. 40,000 omelets made every day. Qatar Airways airplane food. 
What's crazy is like, oh, dude, look at this. Hold on. Every day. Hold on. I want to show you this. Qatar Airways airplane food. Look at this. Uh, Qatar Aircraft Catering Company, also known as CAC. <laughs> What's crazy is like, I remember in the it's 1990s Shafisha and here. early 2000s, airplane food was very good. And when 9-11 happened, it all changed. Like, you used to be able to get a gourmet meal on a flight. Seriously. You still can. I on a couple of flights with my parents in the 90s where we went to Florida and then California. And there was super good food on the flight, I remember. Like, a real meal. And then they just stopped doing it. After 9-11, everything became crackers and fucking shitty-ass sandwiches. What? Spread your own condiment. Like, fucking shit you would never want. And I don't know. You know I don't know <laughs> Dude, I just, I just managed to wrap my head around this take. And basically what he's saying is that 9-11 ruined airplane food, and that's why it sucked. <laughs> well, you can still get, if you go on like Turkish Airlines or Fly Emirates, you can get some really nice stuff. It's just like a, a super expensive airline. And nowadays, many, many, many more people travel by, you know, aircraft travel. So you need to get a lot of cheaper options. They did that, you know, but... <laughs> Like, uh, it is what it is. Everything like, uh, after 9 11. What was that? Crazy. Ryanair, uh, which is technically a, a bus with wings. That's what Ryanair is. Shout out to Ryanair. They're not even trying to hide it, they own up to it. That's their whole gimmick. <clears throat> and they know they're trash, but they provide the cheapest aircraft travel, so nobody cares. Anyway. Shall we fast forward a bit to see what the food looks like that they're making? And yeah, of course, probably probably the U.S. have their equivalents to Ryanair, but I I'm just giving you the European style. Yeah. Even, even what is different for Qatar Airways, the economy we do to free. Yeah. See, so Cheetah Man said I never flew pre 9 11. I'm telling you, it was a completely different experience. You go to the airport, it was like a party. Like everyone was nice. There was no no. Yeah, you got the like Chihuahuas partying or anything. Everyone was more relaxed. And every, it was like you're going on vacation. Most people flying are going on vacation or a business trip. So everyone was nice. And you get on the flight, everyone's cordial. The seats were much wider. The food was much better. It was crazy. It was like a whole different experience. Today, flying is like fucking shit terrible compared to how it used Omelette. to be back in the we day. We never do frozen. <clears throat> I love this invention. It's like a rotating omelets making machine. Every portion is going to be exactly the same because we, we measurement. Huh. Let you can't even get like that doesn't exist. You can't get an omelet on an American flight. Yeah, you certain. can. Not Bro. at all. You, you, I mean, I don't know if you can get an omelet, but if you travel first class with a premium um, service, I guess you can. Can't get that. Try to if you have a long enough service. flight. Woo That's fun. So, how many omelets you're making every day here? It's about forty thousand. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. How many eggs that would be? Forty thousand omelets. So we use about uh, almost. Uh, that looks good. At least ten. I want that omelet. liters of egg yolk. Cream cheese and chive omelet. Oh man, that sounds great. I want that on a fucking. So plate. you know, most of the airline they try to avoid that. frying food. Empanadas, but for right? Us, we have some secret way to do it, so that's why we're doing. I, I've seen like things yeah. just pop, and yeah. then like the oil is down there deep frying. Empanadas. This is the Arabic messy. This is fatayya, right? Fatayya with spinach. Yeah. You can see very nice, golden, crispy. Yeah, it's that. actually a little bit bigger now yeah. after they fried. Wow. It's like a 60,000 piece today. Can't get that on American flight, doesn't exist. Like I said, seriously, it's like God. nuts, fruit, crackers, fucking pretzels, and a shitty ass dry sandwich. That's what you get on American flight. You can't get real food. <clears throat> Maybe just go to a fucking restaurant, you fucking idiot. Look at this. Wow, what how nervous this is. So this one is chickpea. We buy chickpea for hummus, you know? Ah, making hummus. Yeah. Oh, they're making hummus. hummus. We make from fresh uh, chickpea. Uh, that's yeah. the boiling procedure. Wow. That's correct, yeah. But before that, we soak overnight. Yeah. Overnight? Oh, look at this. Well, well done. Friggin' steak they on a plane. Rare in order Amazing for the food to steak. make sure that they can eat more time on the plane. I get it now. So you just cook them to medium rare as a base. That's correct. And yeah. then if passenger want morely cooked, they can put in the oven. That's correct, yeah. I see. Yeah. Burgers on a plane. I've never burger, seen no right? burger on a plane. No. Nope. This burger we do like daily almost 30,000 pieces a day. 30,000 piece. Yeah. We oh start my from God. FIFA. Again, it's do... so different. The world is so fucking different now. You know, this is in Qatar. They don't get two shits. Qatar Airways are like, nah, fuck that. Give them good food. 
in America? Um, it, probably because uh, it is incredibly expensive, and Qatar is an incredibly rich country. Maybe it's because of that. Uh, it's like, fuck you, right? <laughs> Go look up how much the tickets cost. Look at this. What is that? Go look it up. Bacon. Nice. No, ham. Ham slices. Good food. This one is one of the classic French dishes. The beef bourguignon, like, you know, it's like a stew, and they're cooking with mushroom inside. Oh. It's mouth-watering, because the beef is very tender here. Look at that, dude. This is like gourmet-level food that they get on their plane. Seriously, this is gourmet shit. Look at all this, look at this. So look at all that. This is what we call internally as a first line of defense. As you've seen, we divide our cooking tasks into different cooking stations. Okay, man, I think I'm just gonna tap out of this video. And I'm really close to, to my breaking point. Looks amazing. Now I'm fucking I'm really now. close. Because this is like the most lackluster react I've seen in so long. Because the takeaway from this video is that 9-11 ruined airplane food. That is his opinion on this. By the way. <laughs> and that it looks yummy. All right, let's go to the next video. Warhammer? Is this the game coming out later this year? It is. This is the this is Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 coming out later this year. This looks pretty badass. I'm not even into Warhammer, but this looks lit. By wood or not, it's really, you know. See what this looks like, see if you guys are- And this is getting skipped. I mean, this is just a gameplay demo, so he can tell you what he thinks about it. So let's just go live. And we're still doing this. It's weird because it claims it's 4K footage. It's definitely not. Like you're watching, you can see it's pixelated. Did you turn it up to 4K? And it's Or you're just watching 720p. So it's weird. I don't know why it looks like that. If it's a lower quality for footage or something. I don't know. It, the game, the gameplay mechanics. Okay, sad. let's just because I'm a petty bitch. I'm gonna look I'm up this exact MF video. On this MF plane, man, medium skin tone bald. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm I'm tired of these Monday to Friday burgers on this Monday to Friday plane. Uh, that that fucking censored version of of that movie is incredible, incredible. Uh, so let's see this Warhammer 40k Space Marine two full gameplay demo. Warhammer 40k Space Marine two. Full gameplay demo 2024. So I'm gonna find this exact video. Is is it this one? It's from the channel Woo X. Yes, that's the exact same one. I'm gonna turn it up to 2160p, 60 FPS. This is it. I don't even know if my internet could support that, but I'm I'm being petty right now. So please indulge me. This is it. Well, this is. 60 FPS. It looks pretty good. Probably doesn't look as good on, on my stream because it's uh, downscaled and scuffed. But yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Frames. So it's weird. I don't know why it looks like that. If it's a lower quality for footage or something. I don't know. It, the game, the gameplay mechanics look sound. Do they not? It looks like like Gears of War for sure. <laughs> it also looks like Warhammer 40k. Yeah, I think this is the, right. It's the compression. I think the compression might have fucked the video. Yeah, and it looks like Dark Souls too, because you can see your character. And it plays like Dark Souls, because you have a sword. So you can no, probably use it too. They were at, what, 2160? Yeah, that is 4K, Phil. 2160, 60. It's not. It's how, how can you tell it's not? How do you know it's not? Are your eyes that evolved? Not at all. It's not. Definitely not that good. I wonder if I go to like 1440 if it looks better. Nope. It definitely doesn't look any better. Yeah, thanks, what if I go to 1080? Nope. It didn't make it any. It definitely didn't make it any better. <laughs> no. All right. So, what do you guys think? Like, would you like to see me play a game like that? I feel like I haven't played a game like that in um, hundred years. Cause let me let me ask Phil what I think. Fucking based. Yep, sounds like it. There hasn't been any, right? I feel like it could be fun. If they did it right, it could be a really fun game. But is the game designed for co-op is the question, right? I wonder. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that one. Okay. My thoughts are, are uh, great. Man's best friend. Oh, no. This is the video that's going to get me to just cancel this whole stream. And now, oh my god. The whole set doesn't affect the show. Oh no!
Now we get to watch Noam Chomsky videos on DSP React. Which is great, you know? It means that they can't mess with the show anymore. So, excellent, right? That was really, really good. And I'm glad that the setup that we did here has uh, has saved us from that. Problem. I'm going to watch this video just for your guys' sake. Because I probably can't add anything to this. But I, I think he might uh, come up with some gold dust. So, excellent, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, the other good news here. Oh, I did play the first Space Marine game. Someone says, I'm surprised you didn't play the first one. I did seven stars. I'm surprised we're still talking about on this. The stream, and guess what that means? It means... Yo, we unlocked the hat. Hold on, because I'm just going to hit the animation here. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. You bet your ass we did. Gaming, so we this is a super positive stream now. Yeah, sadly, I don't... All he had to do is humiliate himself and degrade himself by begging for like 10 minutes straight on the podcast. And it was all worth it, you guys. So now, they gave him the positive reinforcement. So he can do it again tomorrow. And when it doesn't work, he's going to stomp his foot and cry about it. So it can work again. Why the DSP reacts animations are And that's why he's here right now. Working. I, it's not really the big deal. That's uh, pretty much how his life works. But yeah, because of that, we've hit $100 in tips at tat time. So you guys are going to vote on a hat for today, rest of today's stream. The second half, I will have a hat. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Um, now, the question is what hat? Right? We have to figure this out because... I've worn a, a decent amount of hats recently. I'm trying to think, like, what are the hats that I haven't worn a lot recently? I know for a fact that we wore the Bender hat. We wore the Cowboy hat. What about the we Dunce hat? The fake hair hat. We wore... I gotta look in the closet, I think. I'm trying to remember specifically what hats I haven't worn recently. Hold on. I'm gonna do the poll right now. Which hat is reacting... Best? Best. <laughs> it didn't even rhyme man come on at least try it and rhyme which hat is good to react there you go basic oh, stuff level hat. one rhyming straw hat. we'll do los santos cap we'll do fedora every time i see him with the los santos hat i think of him crying dude because that shit was just goddamn so humiliating Hold on, we can have a quick derailment to watch him cry real quick. Uh, so we got DSP crying. And this is it. Yeah, this is it. Uh, but there was one that was great. It was called DSP cries, then eats a burger. Can right. I find this one? So I'm going to toss in some hats. I yeah, this is it. Decent. This is it. Shout out to Mighty D for this one. This is lit. DSP cries on stream for 30 seconds, then eats two Whoppers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's not the one I'm looking for because here he cries without the hat. But this is the, oh yeah, this is the, it's been tough crying. You cannibal. All so yeah, in case you don't know about this, I don't blame you. This is somebody sent him an email to tell him how meaningful he is and how important his life is to them. And he cried and then he ate two Whoppers. I'll always be a fan. I'll always respect you and what you've done. And what you'll, you'll know that you'll always be a legend in the world of entertainment to me. Keep going as long as you can above all else. Be sure that at the end of the day that you're happy. Love and appreciate you, man. Take care. And the reason that I read that to you guys is because I want, I just want you guys to understand that that means the world to me when I get a message like that. <laughs> like, it's been tough. You know, my life has been tough. <laughs> Over the last decade, it has. <laughs> All the shit that happened to me and all the stress and the, the mental shit that I go through on a daily basis sometimes um, that it's worth it because there's people out there who got something out of all of this you know it wasn't just some dickhead in front of a camera uh, you know doing stupid videos that it actually meant something to people and that means the world to me that there's people out there that you know for a decade that they've been watching me and they've been they've been following me and they've been watching my life evolve and how I've become a better person, you know? Um, you know, admittedly, when I started, I did so many stupid things that, you know, I didn't realize were stupid. And now I've grown and matured, especially the last three to four years, I've changed as a person. 
and a content creator and I realize now, you know, we have things going on in the world right now with Black Lives Matter and stuff and you look back at the stuff that I've done I'm like, man, I was an idiot with the stuff that I said and did. Not caring about, you know, if anyone was offended or hurt by the stuff that I did because there was thousands of people watching me, you know. And I actually now when I... I smell the condiments, like the, the tanginess of the ketchup. <laughs> I, smell the I smell a little bit of the charred meat. The contrast in you know, tone, man. This is legitimately a three-act structure. <laughs> smells the same. It really does. Uh, but let's see the other one. The actual one that I started looking for. Crying for sympathy <laughs> compilation. We got enough content for a compilation, dude. Here we got the, the other classic. In this video, the one thing I hate, uh, not in this one, the original video, is this large frame that is obstructing his face because I would like to see his entire face while he's crying, and at some points I can't. About Scott, which I didn't make a video about Scott. Let me clarify that. That's a segment of a podcast that I did. Yeah, people are butthurt because uh, you didn't answer their text but just monetized the dude's death. That's the too long didn't read. And then here we have the iconic screenshot like this. I can put a poster of this on my wall. And, um, yeah, I'm going to scare all the bitches away, but, you know. He said, just have them. Just take them. This is this like legitimately dressed up like a Grand Theft Auto character and is acting like one. That was the kind of guy that he was, you know? Like the nicest possible guy. Um... There we go. Let's go back to uh, this guy not crying, but instead being super happy because we hit... Oh my god, no! I forgot what he was gonna watch. Fuck me, dude. What is that dude doing in that window? He's holding up something. What's that in his hand? What is that? It's bizarre. Why is he doing that? It's distracting. I can't even listen to him talk. It's that determine the way the society Looks functions. like a... Society's different, but in ours, the major decisions over what happens in the society, decisions over investment and production and distribution and so on, are in the hands of a relatively... Oh yeah, which one, uh, which cat work. is best to react, by the way? Los Santos cap, red fedora, Slytherin hat, or Pikachu hat? I'm split between the Pikachu hat and the Los Santos cap because I just watched him cry in one of them. So, I am clearly biased, but what do you guys think? ...of major corporations and... Companies. So we got Los Santos cap is one, Red Fedora is two, Slytherin hat is three, and Pikachu hat is four. Lock in your picks in chat, and I'm just going to look at it and pretend that I uh, count it, and then I will click on whatever I think. ...merits and investment firms and so on. I believe that. They are also the ones who staff the major executive positions in the government, and they're the ones who own the media, and they're the ones who have to be in a position to make the decisions. They have an overwhelmingly dominant role in the way life happens. So I see a lot of ones and fours. Within the economic system, by law and you know, principle. They All right, let's go Pikachu then. The okay, and it's winning. The need so trolls win again. Imposes very sharp constraints on the political system and uh, the ideological system. Still, I mean, this is a very old video, and I know this is filmed way, way old because you saw the Twin Towers. So this is a very old video from Noam Chomsky, right? His sniff, old... sniff. It means the world to me when people like my content over the years, except King Bee Bunnies, he can eat it and suck a scrotum. <laughs> I'm sure now, try me. But how, how did, look, how did bitch get censored, but scrotum, we just let it fly. We just can do the, the, the medical terms for stuff. Well, I guess Vikes figured out how to bypass the filter now. It's over. It's over. Philosophy it's over. How things We're going to be there. hearing all kinds of um, technical words for vaginas now associated with cat. Okay. But <clears throat> I don't think Thank you, changed. Crocodile Tears, with the sniff Has sniff. changed since when this video was made? You got a, an elite group that are rich and powerful. They dominate every industry. They're in charge of it all. They're on the board of directors of all these different companies, right? And then they influence politics either by being politicians or having family members who are politicians or lobbying the politicians. And they stay in power. We were just talking about earlier on the show. Ivy League schools, right? That is an upper echelon of people that are that are the same people let in over and over. They get this education. They immediately get the best jobs as soon as they get out of college. It's the same people over and over. This elite class that's created, that's a kind of a controlling class. And the American people have all the evidence about this laid out right in front of them. 
right? But they don't do anything about it. We're just complacent. We just sit around, right? It's fine, right? As long as I got my TV, my internet, my games, my booze, my, my pot, my fast food, my pot. I can shove that down my gullet, I can roll around like a whale, I'm good, I'm happy. <laughs> Hashtag DSP but, politics. So I don't but, but Phil, what are you doing about it, actually? Because we're talking about society a bunch, and you're supposed to be a member of society. How are you doing to counteract all these things you don't like? Oh, let me guess, you don't. I don't know how much further we should go so, into this. Because <clears throat> it feels like he's just going to reiterate good. things that you basically learn as you get older is basically what he's saying here. It's like as you get older and you get more aware of how the world works, all these things become knowledge to you. But then you're like, yeah, but everyone's complacent. And since everyone's complacent, this will never change. Right? So. When we talk about manufacturing of consent, whose consent is being manufactured? Cats. We, we can to start with their. Hey, cat. You want to come on stream with me, right? People are really gonna love it if you want to come on stream with me. You want to come on stream? Do you want to be on stream, cat? We're gonna do a very positive Q and A. People loved it last time, and also they were very supportive, cat. Do you want to come on stream? You, you're gonna come on stream. Different groups. We can right get more, into more detail, but at the first level of approximation. Kind of sounds like it. Two targets for propaganda. One is what's sometimes called the political class. There's maybe 20% of the population, which is relatively educated, more or less articulate, uh, that plays some kind of role in decision making. Uh, oh man, to people should just send him videos like this, because this is better just than just sending him a straight up troll video, because this makes him suffer. Because he's sitting here trying to figure out what to say, trying to figure out what opinion to have, and he feels like he has to keep watching. Social life. Do so you hear what he just said? You could never say this today. Did you hear what he just said? He says only 20% of the actual population is educated to the point where they can make kind of intelligent decisions and articulate ones. You understand what he just said, right? He's basically saying 80% of the, the Earth's population is dumbasses who basically shouldn't have any power because they're all idiots. <laughs> managers or cultural managers, like say <clears throat> teachers and writers and so on. They're supposed to vote. They're supposed to play some role in the way economic and political and cultural life goes on. There you go. Now, their consent is crucial. It's one group that has to be deeply indoctrinated. Then there's maybe 80% of the population uh, whose main function is to follow orders and not to think, you know, and not to pay attention to anything. And they're the ones who usually pay the cost. There you um, go. Professor Thompson, no. Um, you outlined a model with filters that propaganda is uh, sent through that's way to the public Can you briefly outline those it's basically an institutional analysis of the major media what we call a propaganda model we're talking primarily about the national media those media that sort of set a general agenda that others more or less adhere to to the extent that they even pay much attention to uh, national or international affairs now the elite media are the sort of the agenda setting media that means the New York Times, the Washington Post, the major television channels, and so on. They set the general framework. The local media more or less adapt to their structure. World News. It doesn't sound like it says that there's a beachhead. I think, I think, I think 628 is a good one. Yeah, but I think, I think, I think 6. Oh my god, I just went to the bathroom and I tried to waste as much time as possible and he's still watching this video. Oh god. I might just quit after this I am suffering. Selection of topics, by distribution of concerns, by emphasis and framing of issues, by filtering of information, by bounding of debate within certain limits. Yeah. They control discourse by deciding what to cover, how to cover it, how to spin it. They control discourse. I'm going to give you a perfect example of this that just happened recently here in Washington State. <clears throat> there was a giant trial for several police officers in the way that they handled, um, you know, someone who they were, I guess, they, I, I don't know all the details. All I know is they were apprehending someone, and in the course of apprehending this person, the person died. Okay? So they're on trial, basically, for, like, murder. Right? Like, did they actually murder this guy? Murder. When they were apprehending him. Burger. They actually adhering to, to everything that was the law of what they were supposed to do as trained police officers. And so after this whole giant 
trial went down. <clears throat> And all this yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you don't know the details, probably just don't talk about it because people are going to be nitpicking the shit out of this segment, such as uh, what I'm doing right now. I'm just completely giving up on this video, and uh, I'm just waiting for the next one. It, out. it was found by the jury. They were all not guilty because they actually had, had completely gone by the law. They had gone by their training. They had done everything that they were supposed to do as, as officers. They could not be found guilty because they didn't do anything wrong per you know what they were supposed to do. Now... Is it unfortunate the per person passed away? Yes. But that was the verdict that was found. Per the law and the evidence provided, that was the verdict. All the local media around here had stories about what a travesty of justice. This is awful. We're going to interview the family of the guy who passed away and talk to every one of them about how unfortunate it is that the cops are not being punished for what they did. There was not one interview conducted of the cops and their families to say what their reaction is to the fact that they were found innocent in the court of law, that by, by legally they were found that they did nothing wrong. It was all one-sided coverage, 100%. So if you're here and you're someone who lives in Washington State and you were following the story and you heard, whoa, a bunch of cops just were found not guilty, and you turn on the news, all you would see is a bunch of people crying that this is a harsh injustice, and you would think that. You're not having facts in front of you to know what actually happened. That's how the media portrayed the entire situation in this area of the country, right? It's about perception. And that's what a lot of these things are, and in life is perception. How politicians explain something to you, right? How the news tells you something. How a funny person, how a funny job, your boss tells you something. Yeah, it's huge perception. And you don't actually know what's going on because you're pulled one thing and you just make the little bit of a You know what I'm saying? Um, who's to say? What is the truth supposed to be? You're pulled one thing and you just make the little bit of a You're pulling stuff to their own agendas. And that's a big part, I think, of what he's talking about. You manufacture consent through having these major outlets present things in a way that you're going to you're gonna interpret it the way they want you to interpret it to get your opinion on their side I'm sorry I'm just keeping so myself entertained with everything that they're doing as people in positions of power right no he's not talking about George Floyd because um, I think that happened in Minnesota I think that was Minneapolis and he's talking about Seattle the interests of dominant elite groups in society yeah wow he is so this this is super old this video you can tell what is from the 80s maybe everything he says 100% applies to today 40 years later it's exactly the same only now it's even worse because now it's the digital age. And now the digital age, it's even more skew and control. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Very interesting. I but like you that. also I you like also do have access to way more points of view and way more news outlets. Of course, that has its own dangers too because you have a bunch of like fabricated and extremely biased stuff as well. This video, I mean, we're not going to watch any more of it because I want to watch other videos today. And it's very political too. And, you know, again, this is not hashtag DS politics right now. DS Maybe politics. We'll get into this. All right, this is just it's a nice little tasting. I like that on this show. We a get nice a little tasting of things to come. Right? Oh man, I, I like that. I, I would rather just uh, just pick up my spoon if you know what I mean. I would rather do that than DS politics. Early '90s, you guys think this is early '90s? Okay. Noma's still alive. He's 95 years old. Wow, good on him. It's amazing that he says shit like this publicly and he's still alive. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that it's amazing. It really is. You know, thank God I'm no one in power. No one listens to me. I'm just some asshole on the internet. Because when you say stuff like this, you become a target. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Wait, what? He just said, thank God no one listens to me. And the whole rant about yesterday is that people don't listen to him and they don't take him seriously. Anyway. All right. I think it is time now for us to swap over to the standard member submissions from the submit it's oh the submissions here. so that's why we had to watch this because it was the mega pay pigs that suggested it there we go i didn't even know i thought we had swapped over a long time ago and now we're gonna skip through everything that was the fun part guys you must join now on the channel if you want to submit clips for the show and i want to get to that right now here we are i'm gonna hit this i'm gonna hit shuffle i'm gonna hit play all okay and now once you set that up and it looks like you guys voted for the Pikachu hat for the rest of the show. So I think I'm just going to go get it. There we go. We won, guys. All right, then we're we won. Here. Randomized playlist, which is what we're jumping into right now. And he looks okay. spectacular. All right, Derek. See you tomorrow. Sounds good. And let me get this uh this thing out of here. And apparently Derek didn't have a submission this week because he peaced out. Okay. Oh, wait. So now we... Oh, this is good. I'm glad I stayed for this one. How to start a cult online. 90s tutorial. I wonder if we're going to find some parallels to Mr. Bernelski. All right, ladies and gents, let's continue. Here we go. How to start a cult Welcome online. Welcome to the wide world of web. But I'm already DSP cult leader. I know all about it. I cast the pig gnosis on everyone out there <laughs> to make you magically do what I say, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a crazy... 
I have these weird voodoo powers that can control everyone watching this video and make you do awful things. Yes, exactly. We know this. I mean, that's what I cast the pig doses. Welcome. So I don't need to watch this video. I already know. And he literally said DSP Cult Leader, which is a, a troll channel from like at least 10 years ago, probably even 15. Oh, all about it. And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to build an online fan base. Let's get started, shall we? This here is the Y2K Survival <laughs> my science fiction blog that will be growing into a thriving community. And with just one good the post, the apocalypse I've is coming. <laughs> Heck yeah. Looking forward to it. And you can do it too. A good online post contains the following Relevance. With the new millennium on the horizon, the Y2K computer glitch is a very current topic. Entertainment value. Captivate your audience with drama. I think that is a very good opinion, Jim Dancing in chat, who says, Phil did not intend to start a cult. It was a side effect of all the dumb shit he does to protect his ego. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I, I agree with this, and I think it's just all unintended. He just happens to use cult tactics. He doesn't want to. It just works. It's kind of like... Um, Only the urine drinkers will survive. Lastly, That's like Skyrim. Just it just works. Invite your fans to join in on the fun. The urine purification guy. So he's trying to get people to Just drink look urine. At those results. Interesting. It's an excellent sign of enjoyment. Too acidic. Needs some practice. With the material. Looks like we've already gathered a cult following. Oh. <laughs> but if we really want to build a large fan base, we're gonna need a heck of a lot more fans. Oh. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Yes, we've seen videos from this guy before, by the way. They're all people parody videos, obviously. Real or yes. Nintendo guy doesn't seem to understand online fantasy role playing. And says our fans lack significant intelligence. What should we do? A. Delete his comment and ban his. Account. Here we go. Yes. B. Create community guidelines that forbid hate speech. C. Call him a homophobic <laughs> slur that makes Mario noises when fucked. <laughs> as great as C is, we. Wow, a huge pop for for anal sex. A huge pop. Allow hate speech in our community. So option B it is. New community guidelines. There you go. If someone makes hateful remarks, it is our duty to reply <laughs> in the appropriate manner. Now I can sit back and let the fans respond with their own insults and death threats. Yeah. All right. Here we wow. go. Wow. Whoa. Cyber Kevin really took the new guideline to heart. Oh man, I'm the, like he has nothing to say about this. Get out of here, man! I'm skipping this shit. Legitimately has no opinions. So while they spread the word, let's talk about today's. He can't. He didn't even make this about himself and how he can relate to this. Oh yeah, back in the day, I used to shit post on forums a lot. NordVPN. All right, the sponsors where I ended. His some his videos are kind of funny, admittedly, because they're parodies and they're they're silly, over the top stuff. So. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. Gaming in the nineties. You're nine. Imagine if Guantanamo was still operational, and you were given a choice of physical torture or watching Riakakak with the neck phone echo non-stop for days at a time on repeat. I am honestly not sure which I would choose. Uh, well, I mean, physical torture is a little bit too much, so I would still watch DSP reacts. At some point, you were just gonna become desensitized. At worst, you're just gonna enjoy it. That's the worst thing that can happen. Best friend, and you're my best friend, and nothing could ever come between us. Whoa! A, a Sega Genesis. Genesis. The. Oh, and this is just a Smosh video in current year. Very interesting. The nineties. Dude, what's up? Are you ready to play Quake Two online? Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, Quake 2. Yep. The dial in the connect, it was slow as dirt. Bro. This is legitimately worse than Jinx reacts. Legitimately worse. When I say this, I absolutely mean this. Like, Jinx reacts, dude. And this dude, like, he literally just sat there. Hold on. Let me fucking find... I don't even know which one. Jinx reacts. Uh, let's do this one with Jax Films. Just look at the small video. Star chasing me. I literally. 
look at this. It's just a dude sitting there and making a face. Except, except, I gotta give credit to Jinx for this. The video he's reacting to is smaller than his camera. While with Phil, you just get to watch this video through him, which is exactly the opposite of transformative content. It's literally the opposite. This is actually one of the fair use laws. If you can use this video as a replacement for watching the real thing, then it's not in fair use. 90. Which this is exactly the definition of. Uh, hey man, you wanna- And no, goat laughing is not transformative. Head to the skate- Whoa, what is happening here? I finally cracked it, Jerry. Okay, cracked what? The location of Mew, Jerry. <laughs> the location of that friggin' Mew. Oh, they thought they were so clever. Thought they could throw us off by having us go up and down and up and down on Cinnabar Island, teasing us with missing no trying to- Okay, if the next thing he says is a laugh or a goat laugh and has no words in it, I quit. Corrupt my game data. Well, they didn't get me this time. No, they didn't because I saw the pattern. I connected the dots and do you know where they led me? Uh, no. To the truck at the Vermilion City Harbor. I mean, it's so simple. It was right under our noses this whole time. All you have to do is lose to somebody on the SSN after getting HM1. Then you respawn back at the Poke Center. You keep playing the game till you get the rest of the HMs. Then you go back to Vermilion City. You surf up <laughs> here. And you Thanks for watching, everybody. 